Welcome, my friends. Welcome to the outer fringes of reality, where fact meets speculation, where paranoia meets illumination, where madness overlaps the fragile membrane of sanity. Do not be afraid. Open your eyes and open your minds to that region that lies beyond the realm of the known, that region we call the Exozone. I am your host, Dictor Van Doomcock, the future ruler of Earth, and with me is my co-host and aficionado of all things Fringe, their neurotic channels, Gary Beekler. Gary, welcome. How are you this fine afternoon? I am doing well, sir. Ready to talk about high strangeness, uh, possibly high people, uh, and <laughs> all kinds of fun stuff today. And you know what? I, I, I think we're going to we're going to talk about a subject that I think should, and I'm not, not hyper, no hyperbole here, folks should be the, the most concerning thing to every human being on this planet and not yeah. what's going on right now. It should straight up be the one thing we actually worry about from time to time. Yes, uh, absolutely. And, uh, with that buildup, well, I don't know. Should I go with the uh, UFO story first, do you think? UFO, or should yeah, I go yeah that's a tease. You got to wait till later in the show. Uh, I, I agree. I, I yeah. think that's uh, that's a that's a very good point. Well, uh, welcome to the Exozone, friends. Uh, we are live and uh, we have uh, a small audience, but that's expected on the Harvey Zone since we dare not uh, go ahead and, and broadcast on our main channels. Uh, but that's okay, ye seekers of wisdom and truth. Uh, actually, maybe I, what I should do is uh, uh, tweet out the uh, link. What do you think? Should I do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, vamp for us for a sec. How are I will things vamp. in I will headquarters vamp. and oh, uh, well, well, what's going on? Um, you know, I, I missed contact in the desert this year, and it should be happening uh, actually right now, I believe. I should be in Palm Springs enjoying contact in the desert and uh, getting, uh, cause it was, it was fun last year. I, I didn't get a lot out of the conference because I pay up, I watch a lot of stuff on YouTube. So it was a lot of repeated information, but I did get to meet, uh, some very interesting people. Uh, I got to meet Brian Forrester. I got to meet Richard Dolan and they were pretty cool. Um, and, and nice, really nice in person. Uh, but I, wow. I miss that. I loved going on that little journey. And after the conference, I went to an AA meeting and then when I got out of this, this building was in the middle of nowhere in, uh, and it's a specific AA meeting building, right? It's in the middle of nowhere at Palm Springs. So you're away from the city lights and stuff. I just got out of my car and I sat on the back. I got my big binoculars out and I looked at the beautiful, just clear sky where you could see stars forever and stared at it for like four hours, you know, looking for whatever. I saw some satellites some shooting stars and just watching the splendor of our of our galaxy and uh yeah i miss that i miss i miss going outside doing stuff oh but i God, mean i really wow. missed going to that conference so i can't wait till they open back up and do that again and and maybe that's something we can do like next year we can do like a an exozone thing there i think that it would, would make be a lot of fun. fun i think it would be a blast man we should do it we yeah. should definitely i mean I, you know i haven't traveled uh very much at all but uh, I'm so sick of this situation and, uh, it's almost like cussedness at this point that, uh, you know, <laughs> it's like, if we ever can safely travel again, by God, uh, we should, we should fucking do it. You yeah. Know? Uh, no, we should I, and I think we will do it. I think we'll be fine. And you know, next year, I mean, as far as you and I, and the people out there in the chat, we'll be fine. So I, 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 think, I think so. I think so. Hopefully so. It's just. You know, I don't know this this damn thing. It's just uh, it's it's depressing and uh, frustrating. It's extremely frustrating. Uh, I'm just I'm just so over it. I'm so sick of it. And uh, you know, <laughs> what a what a damn plague and curse uh, it has been. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it just what what I've done to to help with that and it is just to keep try to, and I know you have too. we, we just, we keep ourselves busy and that's the only thing we can do is like, you know, instead of uh, just try to move ahead, feel like you're accomplishing something and it does help even if it's a little bit, you know, like, uh, you know, freaking cleaning my house today. You know, that was, that was nice. That was a nice change needed to be oh, done. Yeah. Too. Needed to be done. So, Absolutely. Uh, 
Uh, well, so I have I've gone ahead and uh, tweeted out the link. So who knows? Twitter, I shared them uh, in my <laughs> Facebook groups and stuff too. So. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Well, we uh, okay. Let's let's talk about this Brazilian UFO crash, Gary. Um, so uh, I, I I've actually had this story for a couple of weeks, and for various reasons, uh, both of us have been unable to coordinate on uh, Exozone. Uh, but I was listening to this incident on Clyde Lewis. Uh, it was a um, a big story. Uh, there was all sorts of uh, lights sighted in Brazil. Uh, allegedly, there was a crash, uh, military personnel, uh, and then uh, very mysteriously, uh, the hashtag and, and posts uh, started vanishing. There was a lot of a lot of uh, mystery surrounding this thing. A lot of mystery. Um, well, in, in the interest of trying to bring you guys accurate information, I was going ahead and, and researching this up to the last minute before we went on the air. And I now have a revelation about this Brazilian UFO crash. Uh, there was an article just posted in the express.co.uk literally hours ago. And the headline here is Brazil UFO investigation into alien crash reveals truth behind the viral mage UFO footage. Now, there have been a number of, of uh, videos about this, this stuff. Um, and, and it says basically in this article, uh, sightings of an alien UFO in Brazil went viral on social media in May this year, with many people claiming an extraterrestrial spacecraft crashed north of Rio de Janeiro. Conspiracy theorists took over a platform. Well, of course, they love to smear us with that that phrase, by the way. Yeah. Uh, conspiracy theorists took over platforms like Twitter and Facebook to share photos and video clips of glowing lights in the skies. One video in particular alleged to show a UFO crash site in Maje Forest along Brazil's east coast and Guanabara Bay. As the story gained traction, the hashtag ha made UFO, hashtag made UFO began trending on Twitter. Soon after, the hashtag seemingly disappeared and many of the shared video clips were taken down, leading people to speculate a cover-up was in action. According to the Brazilian news site UOL, local authorities in the Air Force had no record of unidentified flying objects around the time of the supposed crash. So, what happened exactly in Brazil last month, and did UF alien UFOs really visit our planet? Uh, and here is a, a copy of the... Uh, I wish I could just... Show. I wonder if I can... Uh, you might be able to share it on your screen. Yeah, yeah. Let, hold on just a sec. Sure, no problem. Let me uh, grab this, and I'll put it in its own window, and then I will I will share this image and this tweet, okay? Uh, hold on just a sec. It would be nice to have a uh, a, a producer of, of some kind on the show. Uh, but I will say, uh, Jamie Folds, has been sending me an awful lot of really, really great information. And uh, I just wanted to say to Jamie, if you are out there listening, I am crediting you as a as a researcher uh, for the show because you you just send me so much stuff, and I think you are just awesome, brother, and uh, I want to thank you uh, for for all that you do. All right, so I'm trying to pull this damn thing up. It's okay. Fuck. I just knocked over Jimi Hendrix. Sorry, well, Jimmy. Well, uh oh, I, I hit my knee on my desk. That, that was Jimi Hendrix falling. It's amigo Jimi Hendrix. Um, <laughs> well, I hope so. Otherwise, yeah. you know, maybe you have passed. I mean, you have yeah. passed her into the beyond. It was amigo. It wasn't Jimmy himself. Um, yeah, uh, you Here know, we I, go. getting Jesus, a right? researcher would 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 be cool if we can. Once we can, uh, I mean, listen, folks, it's me. It's I. I, I am hard to pin down. I am struggling to to 
keep up with stuff. Uh, and it, it's, it's going to have to happen soon. So that would definitely help this show in the future. But, uh, I mean, there, there's a lot of, uh, things that have to be done before that, because if Doomcock and I ever did bring somebody on, they would have to have access to who like personal things, you know, and, uh, that's that that requires a process that takes time that I haven't had yet. So, I mean, a lot right, of this it, is me. It, it, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Now I finally got this damn thing. Yeah. yeah having a producer would just be great, but uh, yeah, that's the problem is that we can't really, uh, uh, there's just, I mean, it, it's, there's no, there's no way to do it. You know, I mean, not, not to be secure, or anything. Okay, so Jesus, have to j jump through hoops. Okay, uh, here we go. Application window. Here we go. All right, so this was a tweet that went out. The UFO crash story out of Maje, Brazil is getting good. Hashtag Mage UFO vanishes. Reddit posts disappear, and something weird is going on with the satellite view of the crash site. And you can see there. Can you see it, Gary? Yep, I can see it. This is on uh, Google Google Earth, google.com slash maps. Uh, you see this kind of weird UFO-shaped blur on that, uh, that, that site, on that location. Uh, isn't that odd? It is. It, it is very odd. Now, um, according to investigators... From the mutual UFO network known as MUFON to all of us here in the XO zone, uh, the Brazil UFO story was a well constructed hoax. The <clears throat> MUFON team said, quote, the case, which has been widely circulated on social media outlets, has been determined to be nothing more than an elaborate hoax. MUFON is a nonprofit organization tasked with collecting eyewitness accounts videos and photos of UFO sightings. The investigation into the Brazil UFO was led by the Brazilian director for MUFON, uh, Ademar José Gevaird. The MUFON chief, chief determined there was no factual evidence to back the UFO crash story. Uh, he said, quote, my team and I have intensively investigated the alleged case and found out that it is a total hoax. It started with a fake audio about a supposed UFO crash published over the net, later assumed to be the, a fabrication by the female author. As time went on, the story got bigger and bigger every day with many alleged witnesses making all sorts of claims, all disconnected from each other, all exaggerated and mostly lies. Uh, according to Mr. Gevaird, some people claim to have heard telepathic requests for help from the downed aliens trapped inside of the spacecraft. And uh, let's see if this damn thing will work. I will show the video, uh, well, a still from the video uh, showing the, the um, hold on, the, the alleged crash. Yeah. If if I can hold on just a sec, you and this damn. this kind of crap like just really, especially when it's elaborate. So what I, what were they? I mean, were they going to monetize this? Write books? Like I don't know why people do. I mean, just to simply get attention. Uh, are you going to like? Is it like a punk thing? Uh, or, or or did they actually think to get away with it? And then and then you know it's this crap that destroys the the ufology community along with the people who go way too far out in the woo woo. And then when they get cultish, you know what I mean? I've talked about it before. This just kills the story. It's almost like governments make this stuff up to dilute it. And which I'm sure they do uh, because it is a pretty serious subject that a lot of people laugh off and you got to think about why people laugh it off. Like why, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, I, I mean, to be such a skeptic to think like there's nothing more than like what's in front of our face in this world. And it's like, that's, you know, that goes, I don't know. I can't get my head around that. I, I like to be open-minded and consider things. Uh, I'll even, you know, for a long time, I listened to David Wilcock and, you know, I was skeptical about some of his stuff, but like he's gone way out there, but there's still a lot of good researchers who do a lot of good work and it gets and it and this does so much damage to a person like Richard Dolan, you know. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. And, it, and it's and disgusting. I, it really yeah. is not helpful at all. And I'm showing you now a picture of the, uh, this video is supposed to show the crashed UFO. Uh, and, and there it is. Now, uh, to me, it looks phony as hell. Mm -hmm. uh, if I had seen this before today, I would never have even, uh, well, I would, I wouldn't have known that the UFO was, uh, uh, that the whole thing was a hoax. I would have assumed though, that this footage was, but you see the kind of things that we're dealing with uh, in in the exozone and in the kind of paranormal community, when we have this kind of garbage out there, it's uh, it, it's really really sick. I uh, I mean, so here we have uh, people, all these people like chiming in, just getting getting involved. Some people claim to have heard telepathic requests for help from the downed aliens trapped inside of the spacecraft. Uh, others have said children were trapped inside of the UFO, or even more bizarrely, reports suggested predatory aliens that feast on humans were aboard. The UFO crash story was also debunked by Google after conspiracy theorists shared satellite images of a white object over Maje. A Google spokesman told Vice, what people are seeing in the imagery is a reflection that's temporarily overloading the satellite sensor. Essentially, the sun reflected off of the surface of that building just at the right angle to briefly blind the satellite. Pretty common phenomenon known as saturation or blooming. So uh, <laughs> so there you go, folks. Uh, that is just sad. That is just sad. Uh, what I mean, I'm glad I caught it. Uh, and, and that just goes to show that at least... Here on the Exozone, uh, we are not trying uh, to uh, scam anybody. Uh, certainly, we are out for the truth and nothing but the truth, even when it is uh, disappointing or painful. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we. so you can rely on our integrity. You may disagree with us, uh, certainly. But uh, on the other hand, uh, we are at least uh, as truthful as, as we know how to be. Right, Gary? Yep. Yeah, and, and especially when we have very interesting stuff out there going on with uh, the disclosure that's going on, we have yes, um, and and listen, even even with that, okay, we we still get a little clap back, and I know there's uh, even even like uh, Mike Barra is uh, just convinced that the uh, that the the uh, the the footage from what we've seen from the Nimitz and stuff is, is faked or ours. And, and that's, you know, I like Mike Barra. I do, but I know he's got a lot of uh, issues with people in the UFO, uh, ufology community. And that's purely based on his bias on that. Uh, and that even with that, you know, people are still questioning, which they should, which they should, but it's absolutely clear with th there's five or six cases out there in ufology that are just, I think, circumstantially tell tell the story of ufology and and keep me uh believing I, I i don't know when that happened over the course of my life but i just i became a believer i haven't seen a ufo i don't know uh, but i've read tons of books and multiple books on roswell uh and yeah, I, I, there's absolutely something going on i wouldn't pretend to know the answer i have my theories i, I tend to think that uh, there are multiple races out there and they all know about us and largely they leave us alone. I think it's yeah. uh, kind of, if you, uh, if you look at it, like how we treat certain animals that are in uh, the Congo, you know, that are endangered or something like that is uh, the, the vast majority of the human popula population leaves them alone. And occasionally there's a poacher that goes in and does stuff. And I think that's, I think that's what happens here. I think uh, occasionally people pop down with, or people, aliens pop down when they shouldn't. And maybe there's some agreement. I don't know. Uh, but if you think there are thousands, some, maybe some of them millions of years ahead of us, that we wouldn't mean much to them. We're not much of a threat. Uh, and, you know, there's no resources we have that they would need. Right. Uh, and it, it would just be uh, a, a luxury or a collectible or something like that. And maybe there's just a, a group of bad ones out there 
or maybe not, they're not all bad. Maybe it's just an individual bad one. I don't know. But to think that we're just uh, absolutely alone in this big old universe. Now, I don't think we're easy to get to. I think that's probably part of it, too. I think we're so spread out out there that you have to be a super, super advanced civilization to get out here. Uh, and are there five or six? Sure. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Based on, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, if there's one, then it's not surprising to think that there might be many. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, if that technology exists, if there's a method, these P these aliens would probably all become very uh, familiar uh, with each other, and uh, probably probably go over the same places that they go and monitor each other and, you know, hang out. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, you know, if yeah. there's one, there's, there's probably more. Well, I think it's, I think the galaxy is teeming with life uh, down to micro microbial level. And then I think uh, there's probably been some civilizations that got part of the way and mm -hmm. were wiped out by a cataclysm or whatever, the war, who knows? Uh, and that stuff will probably never find out or not in our lifetime anyway but i think right here at home there's plenty of mysteries that we need to figure out that are obvious that are staring us right in the face with the ancient civilizations or what the hell what happened to our solar system something barreled through our solar system like a like a like a bowling ball you know like a like That's a very pool. true yeah something uh knocked a planet on its side what the hell happened to v what the hell happened to mars why is there a giant gash on the side of Mars, you know, uh, that, that, that wasn't a Canyon, uh, built up through erosion, uh, through, th I mean, what happened, well, <laughs> you know, maybe I, nuclear erosion. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I've seen that, that we've talked about it before the evidence that there may have been some kind of civilization and some kind of nuclear cataclysm on Mars. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I find that extremely disturbing. Yep. And, uh, it's, it's, a it's a and shame it's a, and it is. And, and, you know, we'll probably find out when we go there. Yeah. I admit those pictures when they, the pictures of the Rover and those rocks that are just everywhere, those rocks. Okay. Then let's think about this as a geologist. How did they get there? How did those rocks get broken up and spread all over the ground and, and, and Mars, something had to happen. They just, rocks don't just pop up and i mean something had to happen be it natural or not i don't know uh yes. and, and yeah it, it, it'd be fascinating to find out i hope i find out in my lifetime i hope we finally get our ass to mars get your ass to mars get your ass to mars indeed uh well you know maybe a little bit later i will show the uh ufo sighting that i had yeah uh in the in the photo I think it's uh, the the photo sequence is very interesting. It's very interesting. Uh, but let's go ahead and get down to uh, this other story, which is uh, extremely disturbing. And uh, I will be getting to uh, the super chats here in just a few minutes. Let's go ahead and and get this story out, and then I'll get to some of these super chats, and then we'll move on. Got a lot of possible stories today, uh, an awful lot. Uh, that, that Jamie has uh, sent and I've stumbled across. Uh, but this one in particular is, is quite disturbing. Uh, this was an article that was uh, posted a few days ago. And uh, it's something that a lot of people don't know about and should. And the answer here is, uh, what is the title? The title is, A Football, si a football Field-Sized Asteroid Just Missed Earth. No one saw it coming. This is not fake news. This is not, uh, you know, woo-woo. This is, this is real. This is real. Uh, an asteroid larger than a football field zoomed past the Earth. You know how close it came, Gary? How close did it come? It came a distance closer than our moon. It missed us by a distance less than from the Earth to the moon. A football field-sized asteroid, larger than a football field, zoomed past Earth at a distance closer than our moon in early June, and astronomers didn't know about it until it had already passed. 
This asteroid is the largest to pass near the Earth in nine years, and it would have been big and fast enough to deliver a nuclear-sized explosion if it had hit Earth. But it didn't hit Earth, so is this okay? Uh, the, the data, NASA's data, shows that the asteroid called 2020 LD was discovered on June 7th, two days after it whizzed past the Earth and the moon. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> the asteroid was between 89 and 200 meters wide and passed within 306,000 kilometers of the planet. That's about 80% of the distance to the moon. <laughs> oh my god. Uh this is this is bad. I mean this would have been uh this would have been bad. Uh this would have been a huge uh boom on Earth. Now, is that the biggest scare that we've had? Well, uh, no. Uh, the last big scare occurred in 2019, just one year ago, uh, when a 100-meter-wide asteroid uh, came out of nowhere, passed within 73,000 kilometers of Earth. This potential city killer, known as 2019 OK, of course, if it had hit, it would have been known as 2019 Not OK, came from the direction of the sun and was not spotted until the last minute. And then this article quips, it's from globalnews.ca, Earthlings don't have to worry about another close encounter with 2020 LD for the next little while, as it will not come any closer than its recent near miss over the next six decades. The asteroid might have been big enough to leave a kilometer-wide crater similar to the one in Flagstaff, Arizona. However, size is just one factor in determining the potential impact of an asteroid. Its speed and angle when it hits the Earth also affects its destructive power. Uh, now, the uh, the one that uh, wiped out the dinosaurs and res was responsible for all of us being here in this civilization uh, was 16 kilometers wide. So that was that was massive. Yes. Uh, and, and thankfully, at least, uh, it, the article concludes, there are no 16-kilometer-wide asteroids currently on NASA's near-approach list, at least none that they can see right now. So, holy shit. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think of that? What do, what do you say to that? <laughs> well, I, I think uh, this is this is what I was referring to earlier on, that this is the most important thing that we should collectively be using every bit of technology we can find to not only map what's close to us, but to do something about it and not wait till last minute going, Hey, you know, we got an asteroid out there that's you know, it's 30 years away. Well, you know what, let's get on it. Let's, uh, you know, for one, uh, Randall Carlson has brought this up and so have others. There, there is, uh, lots of, uh, uh, things you can mine off of asteroid asteroid. We have the technology to do it today. Uh, it'd be rough. It'd be deadly probably lose a few people the first few time we go out, but it's something we have to do because it doesn't take a giant rock that's 16 kilometers wide. It could take a group of them or, and then through this, you know, comets will be a lot harder, but we can at least be one step closer to maybe doing something about a comet, uh, which are the most right. deadly thing. And these things have hit us in the past. Uh, there is an investigation going on right now that uh, one might have hit us, you know, in the recent historical past that wiped out the population of Earth uh, almost to nothing. So, and it might explain why there are deep underground structures and stuff. We'll be referring to that later. Yeah. And Gobekli Tepe and all that stuff. That is stuff we need to talk about uh, uh, through the quote unquote woo woo from Graham Hancock. Uh, we're starting to have real conversations now because the guy was ahead of his time. And he's got scientists together. And now we've got a group of scientists uh, who have competing theories, but they all agree that something happened 12,000 years ago. And maybe, you know, something could have happened 5,000 years ago, too. Uh, there's still a lot of speculation of what technically ended the Bronze Age. And in, these are things we definitely need to worry about. And as we have moved into this quote unquote dirtier part of space, and we've oh, already seen God. two things come in from interstellar space and go swinging around the sun. One of them changed speeds, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's there's things that out there we don't know about. There's things coming we cannot see. And by the time we see them, it'll be too late. 
Yes. And we can do something about it. Uh, instead, you know, petty squabbles, petty squabbles. I- indeed. But uh, on the Exo Zone today, we want to go ahead and give hope to yes. everybody. Uh, I have uh, accordingly uh, come up with another article uh, regarding the DART mission by NASA. NASA, my friends, has a DART mission. Uh, it is uh, saying double asteroid redirection test is what DART stands for. And uh, it is being uh, directed by NASA to the Applied Physics Laboratory, the APL, with a whole bunch of uh, alphabet agencies associated with it. Now, DART is a planetary defense-driven test of technologies. Let me see if I can uh, uh, show this uh, to you guys. Hold on just a sec. Let me, uh, first of all, figure out where the hell I am. Where is this? Where is this tab? What is? There's also a meteor that went over Australia. Uh, I, I, I yes, I yes, got I video have of that. You, did you get the video? Yeah, the green one, the green glow one. Isn't that, that slowly something? moved? Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, did uh, I tell you I, I saw a huge one on my drive back from San Diego? It was dusk. I was looking ahead, you know, listening to my audio book, and I saw sparks come off it, and the flame. You could see the flame like flickering behind it. Uh, it was huge. I, I, I hadn't seen something that big ever. Uh, it wasn't as big as the one we're going to see in the video later, but it was pretty big. I was like, Whoa, oh, uh, I never man. seen sparks come off the back. Uh, that was really, yeah, that was cool. I was like, Oh, hope I see another one of those. Damn. But, uh, Hold on just a second. I'm going to share this screen so you guys can see. Um, where, where, here it is. Okay, so look, double asteroid redirection test. Look, they have actually uh, constructed a uh, a device, a satellite, to go ahead and uh, help us deal with uh, with some of this stuff. Uh, DART is a planetary defense-driven test of technologies for preventing an impact of Earth by a hazardous hazardous asteroid. DART will be the first demonstration of the kinetic impactor technique. Oh dear to change the motion of an asteroid in space. The DART mission is in phase C, led by APL and managed under NASA, blah, blah, blah. So you can see this thing, two different views of the DART spacecraft. Looks kind of cool, you know? Looks like, it doesn't look at all like the kind of thing that would crash with an alien probe and then get reconstructed and be intelligent and return a couple of hundred years later to uh, exterminate all Earth uh, life uh, by impacting the Earth at, at light speed. but you know, uh, this is supposed to be good news. So the <laughs> they're, they're targeting the binary near-Earth asteroid Didymos. Uh, so they're actually targeting a near-Earth asteroid. And uh, it is uh, approximately 780 meters across. And it has a secondary body or a moonlet that is about 160 meters in size, which is more typical of the size of asteroids that could pose the most likely significant threat to Earth. I don't know. I'm starting to feel a little nervous about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, shit. So here we go. Uh, here is an image of uh, Didymos. It's a, called a system now. Oh, shit. The primary body about 780 meters in diameter. Moonlit is about 160 meters in size. You can see they're separated by just over a kilometer. And oh. that, that's that's the little asteroids with their little buddies. And uh, that's the ones we got. Listen, I'll be I'll feel better about this when I can see that when I can see like the 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 pits in the asteroid and it doesn't look like a fuzzy ball. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Well, it looks a little bit like a fuzzy, deformed uh, Death Star, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> when I see a little more detail on that, I'm going to feel better about it. So, oh, uh, shit on a stick. So, anyway, the DART spacecraft will achieve the kinetic impact deflection by deliberately crashing itself into the moonlet at a speed of approximately 6.6 kilometers a second with the aid of an onboard camera called Draco and sophisticated autonomous navigation software. The collision will change the speed of the moonlet in its orbit around the main body by a fraction of 1%, but this will change the orbital period of the moonlet by several minutes, enough to be observed and measured using telescopes on Earth. 
So it's essentially a test to see if they can uh, actually impact this, this moonlet uh, because if they can do that, if they can go ahead and, and crash a spacecraft into it and change it even by uh, one one degree uh, or a fraction of 1%, uh, it, it will be a successful test because, you know, over time, if they could impact something that's heading for Earth, you know, and going to hit in like 10 years, well, uh, you know, a fraction of a, of a degree uh, over that period of time is a significant deviation from course that could, uh, if, if, if properly angled, deflect asteroids from Earth. So, I mean, in theory, it's, it's an interesting idea, and it is uh, kind of encouraging that they are thinking about this. However, yeah. what if they screw up? Oh, I know. <laughs> Well, I mean, we've already, they've already done, um, you know, not the theoretical experiments with uh, using computer layouts to see what happens to a, an asteroid if we blow it up. And a lot of the cases, the asteroid just reforms. It explodes and goes, goes right back. And then it's just a bunch of little rocks in that same space. So it doesn't like completely reform where all the rocks go together, but you still have just a bunch of them now. It just makes the problem a thousand, literally thousands of times worse. Um, if you want to get, okay, this is going to be a little off the subject, but follow me on this one. Cause this is, I bring this up once in a while, but this is, this has to make you think about what the ancients knew about. And we're talking about astrology, which used to be called woo woo, but we don't know how old it is. Okay. That's, it's technically, you know, it's one of the first things uh, man or as a species was uh, man, ancient man was obsessed with the stars, probably because, I mean, there's the argument to be made that there was nothing else to do but look up at night. And, uh, but they also were obsessed. So we have the constellations, right? And that's something that uh, we think Gobekli Tepe is about. Uh, so there is there is the death star you guys have heard of the death star it's w r uh, oh boy did i just lose hang on w r 104 which is the death star and it is a uh i think it's like a it's a uh oh boy hang on. damn it i just had it i'll be right back yeah i'd love uh, to see it Death star 104 is a triple star system located about 7500 light years away uh it's what it is it's in this it's a star dying uh and it's it's going to be a supernova and what it can do is when it does go it's going to shoot out a bunch of gamma radiation now michio kaku has talked about this and we are right in the line if that thing goes we'll get hit by that gamma radiation and the problem is we won't no, because it goes the fast the speed of light. So I think we have something of the matter uh, uh, like 10 minutes before we find out it's all over. <laughs> well, okay. I don't want to know then. But the, no, the scariest thing is it's in the constellation. Uh, it's Sagittarius, which is uh, which is like a, you know, like a cent is a centaur who's uh, the body on the on a horse. Oh, right. Man. Yeah, we're, we're going to get hit by a centaur dick. Oh, it's no. Bow and arrow. Oh, oh, <laughs> even worse. Oh. So that's that's. I mean, think about that. How, how that's amazing coincidence that it's right at the point, uh, right around where the arrow is. And Michio Kaku pointed that out. I didn't know that. I was like, what oh, the hell, dude? How, huh? So I guess it's just an amazing coincidence. I don't know. Uh, they uh, they said it's a long way off, though. We we're talking. Holy shit! Here I was trying to make a, a funny joke, and it turns out that the truth is way way worse than than the joke. I mean, wow, wow. But if you th think about it, I mean, even uh, how did they know that? And was that part of the bow and arrow being part of that? You know, I, I mean, who sat down on their ass one day and like looked at the stars and goes, "Okay, that's a guy on a, who's got a horse body." And a man torso with a bow and arrow. Yeah, how and did how do the Chinese dragon. know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, about uh, about acupuncture, and uh, you know stuff that that you have to intuit. You know, there's so much like ancient wisdom that there's no way they could have known this stuff. Uh, they just intuit it, and uh, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I think 
I think it's the Akasic record. I, I think it is the non-dual aspect of reality where where everything is is one thing and intuition can be every bit as good as scientific research. I mean, Jesus, oh, isn't it, that it, wild? Graham Hancock points out, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure it's called the ayahuasca. It's that, uh, it's yes. that whatever that stuff you take to trip on. But you need, so out of all the plants in the Amazon jungle, uh, you, you got, I think the ayahuasca comes from like a root or, or something, and you need another plant to mix in with it right? So you can take it as a human being because that other, it's a leaf or something like that, uh, keeps you from throwing up because you would just throw up if you didn't have that other totally separate ingredient. So did one guy go through the entire Amazon jungle, like eating the ayahuasca going, okay, maybe if I mix this with it, it won't make me throw up. I mean, how did they know? It's, it's insane. It's, it, it, it's, it, it's just insane to think that we didn't have some kind of knowledge or something and if you look at it we talked about it a little bit in my member stream and somebody brought up that there's hundreds of thousands of, you know we we have had we have been in this form as man with this brain for a couple hundred thousand years but our record uh even if you go with graham hancock goes back twelve thousand years that's it so yes what, 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 were, we, what were we doing the for again were we just throwing around sticks and like hey let's paint our hands on a wall and you know, and then one day we just decided to farm, you know, it's that there had to be something for that. And there was plenty of time and it, yes, it can be wiped out clean where we don't see anything, but I think we are, we do see remnants everywhere. Mm -hmm. They're just not a, you know, everything we find, every archeologist has to do it within that paradigm. Now they are starting to think outside of that. That's starting to happen, which is, I think, exciting. That's the, once they start opening their minds a little bit and we find out stuff might be much older, uh, th there's that, um, God, I forgot the name of it. The, the pyramid they found in, um, ah, oh, Danny Hillman, Danny Hillman found it. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's in, uh, I forgot what country it's not Vietnam, but, uh, one of the countries close to there. And, and they think it's 20,000 years old and it's, it's a, it's an earth pyramid, right? So it's, it's, it's not a mound, but it's a pyramid, but it's made out of earth uh -huh. and it, it's got you know, tunnels inside of it. Uh, and they were about to excavate it. And then the archaeologists of that country, because they didn't discover it, it was uh, somebody else, uh, you know, cock block the guy uh, over ego, over ego. And also it would probably disrupt the belief system there too. So yeah, w they're fighting against that. And, and uh, it, it, that's when these things get messed up, you know, and again, we can get that right back to ufology too, because money got involved in ufology. Uh, yeah, the truth didn't matter, stopped mattering to a lot of people, even, even if they started, I mean, there's a lot of people who started out good. I think they were genuinely in it to find the truth. And then, you know, TV shows got made ancient aliens. Um, like, like I, I like Giorgio I've met him. Uh, I've hung out with him. Uh, I knew he, I knew when, knew him when he was poor and renting a room for my friend's house. And, you know, he was about finding the truth. He was really about Eric Von Daniken and stuff. Is that the case anymore? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't talked to him in a long time. I've talked to him a couple of years ago. Uh, but it, it, what I've heard within that community is, is there's a big split and it's uh, a lot of people kind of quote unquote sold out. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know what the truth is, but it, it's really screwed up. And now, you know, I have some, I have people asking me in my live streams. I'm sure they ask you, it's like, where do we go to find good info anymore? It's like, I don't even know. I, I uh, when Graham Hancock does a lecture, sure. But I, uh, and I know you listen to Clive, uh, what's his name again? Clive, uh, uh, Clyde Lewis, Clive Clyde Lewis. Lewis on uh, ground zero. Yeah. That's where I originally heard the Brazil UFO story. So Clyde got burned. Uh, cause he was making a whole show about it. In fact, he's done kind of a few shows about it and it's just, it's just a shame. It's really sad. Yeah. And, and it seems like there's kind of a void for, I mean, nobody can ever replace art bell, but I think, well, I think there was a person out there and they got rid of him. And, uh, now we got George Nuri, but I think it, it, high time that we need somebody new who will cover all of these subjects and do it in, uh, that practical art bell manner who will listen to everybody but not necessarily believe everybody no yeah i um i i think that's I, I think what you said has a lot of validity and um yeah uh i um 
I'm just trying to get my head around the mentality of somebody that would do this kind of thing, you know, that, yeah. that would, that would want this kind of ho- notoriety or, or something to do with hoaxes. I, I, I don't, I don't understand it. I, I don't get it. Who just, just for what just, is it? Is it a hostile act? Is it, is it just uh, a way to say, "Hey, I, I'm here. I'm me. Uh, you know, just to share with friends." What What do you think about why Why do they do this? To hoax? Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I. Well, you know, if it was funny, I would get it. If it was like you know, four chan uh, trying to get uh, women to shave their head for BLM, you know, that's funny. Uh, but it, it like this, no, I think they probably thought they could maybe make something out of it. Uh, you know, people get desperate. They do desperate things. And, uh, but I, I don't, yeah. Hoaxing a UFO. I, I don't know what you get out of it because uh, how many times have we seen, well, this is a hoax, but I haven't heard anybody come out and take credit. And then sometimes people do get caught. They absolutely do. And back in the day, it's because you could write books and get away with it because there wasn't an internet. Nowadays, I don't know why you do hoax. I mean, maybe to show off your CGI skills and get a job in Hollywood, maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, there might be a short time you can monetize it, but then you'd have to take that money and run. And God, I hope you got a lot. I hope you didn't want to sell out your credibility for a few thousand bucks. Like, I, no. yeah, yeah, it's hard to get your head, but you know what? People do stupid shit. So. Uh, they and do. they don't care about the UFO community. Nobody gives a shit. Mean, like nobody cares uh, right now. And that's, that's the problem is uh, there's nobody fighting for it. And uh, I still think it's, uh, I thought things were getting a little better, but I still think it's in a bad place right now. And it's too bad. So, you know, that's why we do this show. Cause uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. We don't, we don't want, I don't want to kid myself. I mean, that, that's the thing that look, I don't want to kid myself. If uh, if if it turns out that this is all uh, a bunch of hokum and, and hooey, then I, I want to know it. I want to know it. I mean, I've let go of the Loch Ness Monster very reluctantly um, for a long time now. Uh, I, I badly wanted there to be the Loch Ness Monster, but I was not going to turn my my eyes away from the truth, from the data, from the hard facts. Look, they've been up and down Loch Ness. They've done sonar. They've done, and there's been some weird, weird stuff over there. But ultimately, look, if, if there was a, a, a Loch Ness monster, it would have been turned up by now. There just isn't. Uh, you know, same thing if, if they did with, uh, you know, Bigfoot. Uh, you know, it's like, well, I know you love the idea of Bigfoot and there is a lot of evidence, but if they were able to, de- to very decisively say, look, man, we we've, we've had a, uh, you know, uh, a satellite map, the entire earth and, uh, and, and, and with ground, you know, with, with, uh, FLIR technology and with, with sonar and radar and, and going through the forest canopies and, and there just are no, no big feet. It'd be like, well, Okay. Uh, I just, I don't understand that mentality. I don't, I don't get it. It's very disappointing to me. And, uh, I'm glad that I found this article because I was going to go with, with the story. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we don't spread disinformation on this channel. That's for sure. No, we, we definitely don't. And, um, I don't know. It's just, it's just sad. Uh, let's. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can't uh, do uh, a few super chats here, see what's on people's minds. And then we've got uh, yeah. that story that I shared with you, uh, Gary, which I think is right up your alley. I can't wait to yeah. see uh, what you have to say about that. But also, uh, I've got a, a story that is uh, kind of mind-blowing that I think you are also uh, going to enjoy, dude. Uh, this is, this is, this is a, 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 a real, uh, it, it's science, but it's also, it's so out there that it just makes you kind of go, woo. I mean, it, it, it'll blow your mind. It's going to be a, a fun discussion. Uh, Mitch Tebow. Hello, Mitch with a $27 Jesus and 99 cent super sticker, uh, of a pair dancing around going, yeah, da, 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 saying you are amazing. Uh, thank you, Mitch Tebow. So are you brother. 
So are you. And by the way, I got your uh, your gift the other day, uh, yesterday, in fact, uh, the uh, the one about the hunt, the wild hunt, I believe it was called uh, the the um, the the movie. Thank you, Mitch Tebow. I, I'm looking forward to watching it. It sounds really, really good. And by the way, we do have a few uh, Doomicorns in the chat. We've got Yodam Darkstar, Unleashed a Doomicorn, Scottish Nerd, Unleashed a Doomicorn, Jake D, Unleashed a Doomicorn, Not Too Outdone, Stalin Falcon, Unleashed a Doomicorn, and Mitch Tebow, also Unleashed a Doomicorn. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, appreciate you very, very much on that. Mitch Tebow. Boy, he will not he will not be outdone uh, with a $13.99 super chat. Thank you, Mitch, again, brother. You're awesome. Says, hail Doomcock. I'm listening in from my basement. It's freaking 94 degrees Fahrenheit here in eastern Canada at the moment. Holy shit. It's cooler than that at my forward base on the surface in Austin, Texas. What's it like where you are, Gary? What's the temp? Uh, I believe the current temp is 84. Five? It's hot. God, what wonderful. I mean, that's one thing about San Francisco. The weather is just, mm, mm, mm. I mean, it's just nice and cool, uh, you know, not blistering hot. Uh, that that That's one of the good things. Of course, it's always going to be about 15 degrees hotter inside your place because of the great anger coming off of your head yes. regarding what's going on in San Francisco, and, uh, for which I do not blame you whatsoever. Uh, dude, I'm so sorry, Mitch, but I hope that we can cool you down with some uh, fascinating and weird news of the strange. Thank you, Mitch Thibault. The Kelvington with a $10 super chat. Thank you, the Kelvington. Says, let the Exozone commence. And so it has. Ting! Just like that, it has commenced. Bird O oh, Pray 5. Man, I am so sorry you missed the live stream yesterday, Bird O oh, Pray 5. I wrote you back though. Kapla, my friend. Kapla. I also liked your uh your uh video that you sent me, the music video, and I'm so sorry. Uh Piano Dean, uh Gary, Piano Dean, who's a very talented musician and has done some uh song parodies for the Phantom Menace. Uh he's got the the damn beer bug. He's got the damn. I heard, bug. yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, that is honestly the second person in my chat that I've heard that has it since it started. So I hope he feels better. And <sighs> uh, I know, man, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it's just a sad thing. I'm very, very sorry to hear that. Uh, very sorry. And yeah. uh, I want to congratulate Cardinal Sin. I just decided what the hell. Uh, the poor man, he's recuperating right now from surgery. He got his leg basically snapped in many, many pieces like a jigsaw puzzle uh, installing an AC unit. Uh, so I've been worried about him. He's he's back, Gary. He's hanging in. Awesome. And uh, just, to, just to honor the man for all that he does and, and just being a great guy, uh, went ahead and, and just gave him a little wrench here on uh, the Exozone. So uh, hope that makes you uh, feel a little better, Cardinal Sin. God bless you, my friend. Uh, and you certainly don't have to do anything. Uh, it's it can be an honorific if you want, uh, whatever you want. I just uh, I just wanted to go ahead and and say hi to you, brother. And uh, I'm so sorry you're feeling bad, really bad. You're feeling bad. Uh, Burn a prey five with a five dollar super chat says black helicopters flying over now. The toaster has been arguing with the microwave, and I think the refrigerator is out to get me. Moonrise on time. <laughs> Bird of Prey 5, geez. What the hell is going on, Bird of Prey 5? Uh, black helicopters, the toaster arguing with the microwave, refrigerators out to get Bird of Prey 5. Um, Gary, have you got any comment to that? Uh, I got a Watchman toaster on eBay the other day. A Watchman toaster? Yes, I had it before, and... I wanted it again. Oof. I sold it in the, the store. So I ordered it on eBay and somebody stole it from my porch. So I ordered another one. Yeah. So it's a piece of, you, you toast your toast and you get the Rorschach design in your toast. Uh, wow. That is amazing. Alan Moore probably like blew his stack. Remember he, the reason he quit DC was because they made a watchman watch. Yes. 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 Uh, should we? I don't think we should be uh, concerned. Uh, there's a, a bunch of uh, chat uh, in here saying uh, "as attack," uh, "as guardian attack." Hail to the As Guardians! 
Uh, is is that is that as? That's the As Guardians. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you got to think about the name Asgard for just a moment. D- did you know uh, when they did the Young Avengers? Uh, that one of the kids' names originally was the Ass Guardian, and he was gay. He was gay character. <laughs> it's the Ass- <laughs> oh, oh, oh my God! Oh uh, man! It's so- knocked down Batman and freaking oh, uh, and and my Nazgul. <laughs> wow! I would love that toaster now. I didn't know it existed. It uh, by the way, oh, yeah, hail to. It does. to- uh, heel versus baby face, the Asgardians. Uh, the they, the he Asgard. <laughs> the Asgard. <laughs> oh uh, so don't worry about it, uh, mods. It is uh, it is a good thing. So I just not like pe- they were start. They were thinking that they were being uh, uh, attacked here, no. and uh, no, no, uh, not at all. Uh, thank you, As. Good to see you, man. Heel versus baby face. What a great guy, right? Yes. Yes. Hey, I, I got to, I actually have an action for a figure emergency. I, I got to pick this up. They're oh, kind okay. of expensive. No I'll be right back. Sorry. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> I like want to pound a the desk. Few more, a few more super chats. No problem. Do it. Do it. Do uh, it. Hail to the ass guardians and the ass guardians. Uh, no, no problem. Uh, yeah. You know, that happened with a golden eagle raid. A raging golden eagle uh, uh, once uh, bombed uh, one of my uh, uh, chats, and and my my mods were freaking out and trying to, you know, block them and stuff. Uh, no, 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 no. It's all fine. It's all fine. Hail to as hail to heel versus baby face. What a great guy. Good to see you, my friends. Welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you, Bird of Prey Five. I love the mad poetry of your paranoia. Uh, I, 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 it speaks to me somehow. It absolutely speaks to me. Uh, Rob Altus with a $2 super chat. Hail Rob Altus. Good to see you, brother. He says, we're all sick of this bug and the hysteria. I know, man, I am so sick to death of it. Absolutely. And I am so, so sorry. This has happened to everybody. Deeply sorry. Uh, Nicholas Horton with a five pound super chat. Hail Nicholas Horton says, hail all. They found underground river channels in antarctica wow really nicholas horton so does that mean that it actually has flowing water under antarctica or are you saying that uh they are channels of of you know from the past uh what's going on and what's down there man there's some weird stuff going on in antarctica and i don't know what to uh what to think about it i mean that's where they found the particles coming out of the earth these are the kind of particles that typically go into the earth from outside uh, in the in the greater universe. Uh, and, and the fact that they're emitting from inside the earth uh, has led scientists to credibly hypothesize, and this is not woo-woo either, credibly hypothesize the existence of a mirror universe where time flows backwards. What do you think of that? Uh, Nicholas Horton, Antarctica is a strange place. H.P. Lovecraft, maybe he had it right. You know, maybe at the Mountains of Madness is true. If they find those creatures down there, I definitely, definitely want to see it. Hail Nicholas Horton. Rod Thunderheart. Boom, 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 boom. With a $40 Canadian super chat. Rod, great to see you, brother. How are you, my friend? He says, hail Gary, hail Doomcock. I know America got all excited about the UFO footage from the Air Force that was declassified, but Canada has known UFOs since 2013. Government declassified years of sightings and actually created a library. Could I get a link to that library, Rod Thunderheart? Holy shit, have you seen this? Have you gone into yeah, this? Yeah, I've gone through it. Uh, they had, I forgot the gentleman's name, but he was a prominent member in government, uh, was a champion of this. Uh, Canada has been open-minded to it for years. So has France, so has Chile. Uh, there are other countries out there that are way ahead. Uh, Italy, uh, are way ahead of us on this. They don't have our technology, but, uh, no, they, they've been very open about this stuff. Even the UK opened up some of their, uh, government stuff. Uh, and, it's fascinating. Read through it, folks. Read. I mean, for for every single skeptic, just read through that stuff because there, uh, it, it, it's there are moments in these files where they are like, we don't know what this is. We can't. We had trained observers witness something that 
is impossible for for us. I mean, it's impossible, like physically, it, for physics, for how's, how we understand physics, some of the stuff that has been witnessed, it's impossible, like it disappears. It, but it, it it doesn't. It's going so fast, like something will look like it it teleports, but it's not. It's actually just flying away. And if anything mm -hmm. is inside there, like us, it's we're it's freaking splats on the side of a a corridor or something. You know, that there's there's too many things. Can we nail something down? No. But does does our government have absolute proof of this? I I believe so. I believe so. And we've had whistleblowers <laughs> come out, say it, you know? Uh, so. Yeah. I would be surprised if they did not, sir. I would be surprised if they did not, because, you know, I, I've got that firsthand account of that missile test uh, from that witness who uh, was brought in. He was a, a missile engineer. He was on the base uh, or, or, or he was the photographic guy. He was the, he was the guy taking pictures of right, it. Yep. Right. 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 Uh, and they called him in. They said, can you explain this? And they, they showed him the footage that he had he had shot. And it was on a missile test. And uh, so so the, the camera's panning up with the missile. I guess he can't really, couldn't really see it in the camera, you know. Uh, and uh, he's, he's, he's panning with it. And then in this footage, a, a UFO, a damn saucer, flies up next to the missile, zaps it with a light beam, uh, zips around to the other side of it, zaps it with another light beam and the missile malfunctions and goes off course. And then the UFO flies away. Yeah. And it's flying around the tip of it while this thing is shooting up in the air at yes. supersonic <laughs> speed. And it's just kind of floating around and like, do, 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 beep, beep, bop, 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 bop. now it doesn't work. Stupid humans. Bye-bye. You know, that's and, right. Uh, Dancing around like Gene Kelly in a sailor suit on leave. Yeah. I'm zapping yeah. on the missile. I'm I mean, just dancing around. It's just, I don't know, man. Look, look, there's only has to be one instance of a, of a credible uh, alien craft or, or strange unexplained craft to cast doubt. I mean, there, if there's one, that's it. If one is true out of all of them, uh, that that says UFOs exist, and and the fact that the Navy has come out with these this disclosure, it's no longer crazy to talk about these these craft. So no longer crazy. And now we start talking about the other options. Okay, and we'll we'll start practically and then go on from there. It's another. It's one of ours. Uh, okay, if we say that it's one of ours, then there's a super secret agency that is testing stuff on our own military, uh, which would piss off a lot of people within government. Is it possible? Sure. Uh, but if we have that kind of technology, if we can move that fast, that that there's practical applications for it this very second that, that can be used for a lot of good, that can be more importantly used to make a lot of money. If we have a little if we have a little drone that can go from the surface of the ocean to the atmosphere in under a second, imagine what that would do for Amazon delivery. Uh, <laughs> I know. Okay. So, or it's one of our enemies, then we're dead. If our enemies have this, we are screwed and we don't. Or there's a Bond villain out there who has super technology and uh, now we need to create a James Bond to fight him. Uh, or you go from that. It's it's aliens. Is it a probe? Is it an alien probe where there's no living aliens where they sent it off and they are in some remote location controlling it? Sure, I think that's a possibility. Uh, is it interdimensional? Is it us visiting us? You know, from the future. I, who knows? Yes. Uh, but the the way that thing moves, we can't do it because it didn't make any sonic booms. It didn't make any noise at all. And the fact that we were able to detect us on radar, well, they talked about it. They said that we had just advanced our radar technology like a couple of years before. So we're able to see things now that we weren't able to see before. And it's even better now. Um, yeah. And the question has to be asked, are they still seeing these things? They just recently released this. Uh, that, And that was from 2004, mind you. You've got to keep in mind that that. It wasn't from 2014 or, or four months ago. It was from 2004. So we're talking 15 years ago, 16 years ago. Uh, 
I don't think we have the drone technology to do that now. I definitely don't think we had it 16 years ago. Um, and uh, I guess there's skeptical people out there. I, I don't believe these days you can be testing on our own military within the government. I just think that would be ill-advised. No. no, what would be the point? I mean, they they could test it on some other fleet. You know, they, they actually the thing to do would probably be to test it on fishermen or something that are not even equipped with any kind of weaponry or intercepting craft or anything else. Why in God's name would you want to tip your hand about your own technology? You just, you wouldn't. You definitely wouldn't. What, wh there's another option. What if it is some kind of uh, genuinely paranormal uh, kind of uh, effect like... Uh, say some kind of life form uh, that that is previously uh, un, uh, undetected, uh, some kind of other alternate life form that uh, exists uh, as as photons or uh, you know uh, or some kind of spirit thing like like not uh, unlike ghosts you know some kind of uh, uh, ectoplasm or, or or something. I mean, who who knows? Uh, it's definitely, it's definitely ours. I don't think it's, it's us. I, I don't, I don't think, think it's our that. enemies. I don't think it's human unless it's from the future. Like you said, uh, but look at this point, people with, with the military after all this time saying that this footage is real, isn't it crazier not to believe in UFOs? Isn't it basically at this point giving in to the very psy ops that they wanted you to be suckered uh, into? Thomas Williams says photons are just light. Exactly. Well, what if it's some kind of of intelligence uh, that is um, uh, comprised primarily of uh, photons instead of cells? I mean, silicon life forms. Uh, God knows. I, I'm just saying, just because we have a certain view of what constitutes life does not mean that life is bound by uh, our ideas of what life can be. Yeah, not and if it's chance. ours and they're going through this whole dog and pony show to distract us from something, well, what? What are we just, what are they distracting us from? The fact that we're getting bombarded by asteroids. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, I don't know what the end game to, to uh, the, the Navy fabricating this. Uh, uh, you know, if there was something going on or uh, if uh, now I, I do think it's a distraction, but I think it's a real distraction. It's it's using there. It's opportunizing because that's what they do uh, to the false flaggers out there. False flags happen. They most definitely happen. We've seen a few happen in the past, but there's usually something else to distract from. I don't know what there is to distract from. But what I often seen what, and you can't technically call this false flag is something happening them using this to create legislature or whatever uh so i think they might have had this and they decided to put it out there and we we mentioned this when we first saw it it's like what's really going on if they're actually being up front and telling us about this stuff now what's really going on because there must be something very bad yeah uh, either happening or i i don't know i don't know and um but as far as outright fabrication I think they would do a better job. Um, yeah. uh, I know what, again, I know what Mike Vera says and, and, uh, but we also have the, 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 the radar operator saying these things moved at speeds with, we can't, th I mean, that are impossible mm -hmm. that are impossible. And, uh, we don't have video of that. And, uh, we do have some of the pilots saying, Hey, there's better video out there, by the way, there's tons of, there's more and it's clearer. Hopefully we'll see that someday, but I doubt it. I, I doubt it too. I doubt it too. But uh, there's a reason why I'm the future ruler of Earth, and it is because uh, I, I think on many levels, Gary, and uh, I introduced this idea about uh, life uh, possibly being in another form and uh, talking about photons and stuff. Uh, baiting people in the chat. Uh, we've got Alt Lexington says life form of photons. It's called an EMH. Uh, photons is life. No way. Photons don't bind uh, and so on and so forth. Well, perhaps there is more 
uh, to uh, heaven and earth than is dreamt of in your philosophies, my friends, because I've got a story here that is effing amazing. Gary, this is uh, a, a article on uh, bigthink.com. And the uh, title of this article is There Is No Dark Matter. Instead, information has mass, physicists say. Is information the fifth form of matter? Uh. Researchers have been trying for over 60 years to detect dark matter. There are many theories about it, but none are supported by evidence. The mass energy information equivalence principle combines several theories to offer an alternative to dark matter. What do you think about that? Could information have mass? I can't get my head around that. <sighs> well, I can't get I can't get around the this notion that I've I've thought many many times, which is what mass does a thought have? Mm, what okay. is a thought? We know that thoughts exist. What are thoughts? What are dreams? Do they have any kind of reality whatever? Do they I mean, what 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 is a thought? Uh, since the 70s, astronomers and physicists have been unable to identify any evidence of dark matter. One theory is it's all tied up in space-bound objects called machos, which are massive compact halo objects, including black holes, supermassive black holes, brown dwarfs, neutron stars, and so on. Uh, another theory is that dark matter is made up of a type of non-baryonic matter called WIMPs, uh, weakly interacting massive particles. Uh, so they, they, they've tried to, to explain this stuff. Uh, but one theoretical physicist now, Dr. Melvin Vopson of the University of Portsmouth in the UK, uh, has a more radical notion uh, to explain the missing mass in the universe. Yeah, he has a hypothesis he calls the mass energy information equivalence. It states that information is the fundamental building block of the universe and it has mass. This accounts for the missing mass within galaxies, thus eliminating the hypothesis of dark matter entirely. Uh, now, I have said many, many times uh, on this show, talking about, uh, you know, Vedanta, Eastern philosophy, and so forth, that, you know, essentially all of this manifestation is consciousness. Uh, that, that there is nothing that is not consciousness in various forms, uh, pretending to be the divisions of the universe and experiencing itself uh, subjectively uh, when really it's, it's objectively indivisible. Well, uh, this, kind of, this kind of ties into this. Uh, the idea that information is an essential building block of the universe isn't new. Uh, the classical information theory was uh, posited by uh, Claude Shannon uh, in the mid-20th century. Um, he was basically hired at Bell Labs to figure out how to transfer information over a system of wires, wrote a Bible on using mathematics to set up communication systems, uh, laying the foundation for the digital age. So he is known uh, by many as the father of the, the digital age and was the first to define one unit of information as a bit. So now uh, Vops, basically um, Vopson, this, this uh, physicist, uh, says that not only is information the essential unit of the universe, but also that it is energy and has mass. To support this claim, he unifies and coordinates special relativity with the Landauer principle. It is named after Rolf Landauer, who in 1961 predicted erasing even one bit of information would release a tiny amount of heat, a figure which he calculated. Landauer said this proves information is more than just a mathematical quantity. This connects information to energy, and through experimental testing over the years, the Landauer principle has held up. 
<laughs> if Bobson says, Landauer first identified the link between thermo thermodynamics and information by postulating that logical irrever irreversibility of a computational process implies physical irreversibility. Information is physical, Lobson says, and demonstrates the link between information theory and thermodynamics. Uh, Vopson's theory states that uh, once created, information has finite and quantifiable mass. It so far applies only to di digital systems, but could very well apply to analog and biological ones too, and even quantum or relativistic moving systems. Relativity and quantum mechanics are possible future directions of the mass energy information equivalence principle. It is he maintains the fifth state of matter. Wow. <laughs> uh, what do you think of that? That's what do you think of them? Crazy, Apple? man. Uh, you know, again, that's way above my uh, intelligence range and above my IQ. I can try to get my head around it. A thought is, I mean, can you measure a thought? Uh, is it something that, that is we, what I've yeah. wondered? I, I was having, I mean, I think I thought this. Um, I mean, there, we're uh, not, few, of course, as we're not talking about thoughts, T H O T. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, thoughts can definitely be uh, measured, and in fact, I, I would be very happy to do so. I've got a, I've got a tape measure right here, right now. We <laughs> thoughts want to be measured. I, I'd be they happy be to do it as well. <laughs> happy to do it. But the thing is, I was wondering this. Oh well, I, I look. I, I this has been one of my obsessions my whole life. I need to pour myself something here. Uh, I, I, I've been obsessed with uh, consciousness, with the idea of um, what is the nature of reality? What is a, a model of the universe that does not have plot holes, particularly philosophically and religiously? That has been one of my obsessions is to find a, 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 a philosophy, an approach to reality that isn't stupid. Because I assume a rationality to the universe. The universe does not seem to be uh, stupid or irrational. Uh, so, you know, all of my investigations and the philosophy that I have kind of uh, come up with uh, is the, it, it echoes in a lot of ways Vedanta, uh, you know, uh, Taoism, uh, you know, the, the wisdom of, of the ancients. Uh, in terms of the East, I, I do believe that uh, all of uh, of existence, manifestation, not merely thoughts, uh, not merely energy, but matter itself, all manifestations of a non-dual consciousness that is experiencing itself. And the more we learn about quantum physics, the more we learn about uh, things like this, uh, the closer we get to uh, independent scientific Echoing and verification of things that ancients knew thousands of years ago through their examinations of themselves uh, by going inside on meditation, on mystical uh, revelations, uh, the kind of very things we were talking about earlier, Gary. Um, you know, the, the notion that uh, we intuit things. We intuit things. Well, you know, that doesn't seem as far-fetched or ridiculous or anti-scientific if indeed we are, all of us, uh, really fundamentally indivisible from the phenomenon that we are uh, analyzing or, or dreaming about. So I, I was fascinated by this uh, kind of confirmation yeah. of this. And, and, and just, honestly, I, I don't know when it was. I, I Honestly, I think it was only a few months ago. I, I had a dream. And I, I woke up and I, I just thought, what the, where, where do these things come from? You know, and, and can you, do, do thoughts have any physical manifestation? And if not, then how the hell do they exist? And what, what the hell are they? Uh, I, I just find this fascinating. I think this is like my favorite stuff to talk about on, on the exo zone. Um, it's, it's weird. Uh, to measure the mass of digital information, you start with an empty data storage device. 
<laughs> Next, you measure its total mass with a highly sensitive measuring apparatus. Then you fill it and determine its mass. Next, you erase one file and evaluate it again. The trouble is the, quote, ultra-accurate mass measurement device the paper describes doesn't exist yet. This would be an interferometer, something similar to LIGO or perhaps an ultra-sensitive weighing machine akin to a kibble balance. And uh, Vopsen is applying for a small grant with the objection of uh, objective of, of designing such an experiment. Uh, what, what do you think? Yes, Cardinal Sin, consult with Alan Watts. Amen, brother. Amen. What, what do you think about all this? Is it crazy? What do you think? No, I don't think it's crazy. I think it's, uh, I think we're, we're just smart enough to approach. And I mean, as a species approach stuff like that, this, but not get anywhere near an answering it uh but we can start approaching stuff like this and it just shows how how far we have to go and how much we don't understand and uh you know you brought up intuiting things you know that's that that dude that's how i do my life that's how i yes my purchases that's how i every facet of my life is based i i use intuition uh, and I don't, I like my channel. I run my channel by my gut completely. There's no, I, you know, I, I look at the analytics and stuff, but I don't really think about them very much I, 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 at all. I, I base all my decisions on my gut and, uh, that I, you know, I think there's something to that. Can I explain it? No, absolutely not. But you know, we've get, they can, uh, science can say they, well, we can answer God. It's a, there's a, a part in our brain that requires us to worship something. And by the way, that's not proven. Again, that's a theory. Uh, we can answer deja vu. It's a chemical reaction. Or you can answer everything by saying it's a chemical reaction in our brain, but I just don't think all of the, it's that simple. I think it's a combination of those things. So uh, yeah, I, it's not, I, I'd have to do a lot of thinking about it to, to even begin to understand it. But uh, I can see if you can measure a thought and, it, or, you know, maybe someday we could record a dream or, uh, you know, yeah, then maybe that stuff, you know, as far as it being matter, I, I ooh, like I said, I'm, that's beyond me. Uh, but it's fascinating. Uh, I love stuff like that. And stuff loquacious primate, uh, could, could answer that stuff better than I could. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> no, nobody can really that. answer yeah. it, uh, yeah. to, but, uh, I'm typing out a smart ass, uh, thing in the, in the chat. I am a toxic male and very happy to measure a thought. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I am, uh, and, and in multi dimensions too, lengthwise across, uh, the backside whole, whole thing. I want to be thorough in my thought experiment. Uh, but getting back to this, uh, uh look, uh, Alan Watts talks about this, uh, uh Cardinal Sin was, was mentioning Alan Watts. Alan Watts is one of my favorite uh, figures in, in history. I mean, one of those guys, if you could, you know, in history, if you could meet anybody uh, and, and, and feel just completely like in awe, you know, uh, Alan Watts would be that guy for me. And he, he once pointed out, how do you make a decision? It seems that when you attempt to make a decision, you analyze everything. And you weigh the pros and cons, and then you go ahead and flip a coin. Uh, because, you know, intelligence creates anxiety. Because the more uh, intelligent we are and the more we analyze and we try to make a decision, there is always the anxiety that some piece of data has eluded us. Uh, some consideration has not been made. Uh, we can never, ever... Uh, perfectly make uh, a decision. And in the end, uh, we, we go back and forth. We agonize over this or, oh, I could do this. I could do this. I could do this. I could do this. When does the point come when you make the decision? What triggers it? I don't know. It, it, it really is like you, you weigh it and you weigh it and you weigh it and you weigh it. And then you flip a coin and hope for the best. So <laughs> intuition is, is generally, uh, I mean, for, for certain things, it, you know, a, a very simple problem. Yes, you can, you can uh, kind of intelligence your way through, although there are always random uh, elements that can arise to completely screw your, your computations on even the most obvious uh, problem. But it is, it is fascinating, the mental processes, how they, how they work, 
and ultimately we do not understand uh, the the thought processes in our own heads. So I think it's it's a it's a fascinating uh, a fascinating thing. Um, but I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to ramble. No. This is stuff we need to think about. And if we thought about this stuff more instead of petty shit out there, I think uh, we'd be much better off, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, well, I love it. I just, I just cannot get over it. I, I cannot get over uh, these thoughts. Uh, I, I absolutely, for a long time, before I even had my, my channel, I mean, uh, my lifelong passion has always been pop culture, comics, uh, geek stuff. I am a geek through and through and through. But in, in the latter part of my life, a friend introduced me to a book called The Wisdom of Insecurity by Alan Watts. And it set me on a path of discovery to a whole world of, of other philosophy, Eastern concepts, uh, you know, Buddhism, Taoism, uh, you know, uh, they call it Hinduism, but it's really... Uh, Vedanta in a lot of cases. And uh, this has kind of been one of the great obsessions of my life. And it's always a delight to be able to uh, talk about it, particularly when it gets echoed by um, things like quantum physics and, and articles like this. I mean, the idea that all matter is an extrusion from a single field. You know, we think of, of electrons, for example as particles. We think of them as, you know, all these separate particles that make up our, our bodies and all of matter. Uh, science tells us that, that every uh, electron is not a independent particle, like a little golf ball. It's like a spine on a porcupine. Uh, very, very crude and rough and inaccurate analogy. But that means that we are all, again, one thing. Not just as people, but rocks, clouds, other planets, it is. There's nothing that is not uh, extruded from a unified field. So we are all constantly in contact with everything that exists. This is according to to physics, quantum physics. What do you think of that shit? <laughs> Damn. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, I, I again, the, this, this, and David Rayner in the chat says, by gun, these two are talking a load of bollocks tonight. No, that's science. Look it up. <laughs> I don't know. Look it up. I, that's science right there. Uh, Go ahead, Gary. I'm sorry. Bollocks right. Anyway, I always say bollocks wrong. Bullocks. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. This is stuff I'm willing to think about though. I, I am. I don't know if I, I, I mean, I, I'm not into the Eastern philosophies that much, but uh, yeah, I'm certainly open to it. I fry, uh, listen, uh, this is not stuff I would even consider until I, I, and I don't recommend people doing this. I really don't because it's not safe for everybody, but uh, you know, doing a little acid, doing some shrooms, uh, it lifts a veil on things. And again, if that's chemical, then it is, but uh, it, it really changed my perspective on um on life and really opened me up to spirituality which is something i wasn't open to at all which is fundamental in my recovery so whether mm -hmm. there's science to back this up i don't need it to back it up i i, I flat out don't need it but no. uh it's interesting though it certainly is well i i i never stop learning gary i never stop i i never am so cocksure about anything yeah. My mind remains open. And that, that is one of the, uh, I think, prerequisites to intelligence is never closing your mind. If, uh, if tomorrow uh, there, there was like uh, giant eggshells, uh, reptilian eggshells located on the banks of the Loch Ness, uh, I would reopen the case on Nessie. You know, I mean, I'm saying there is no Loch Ness monster at this juncture for I have not found any proof and I've it's just, there's lots of proof that there's not, but any new piece of information, uh, the book gets opened, the book gets opened again, but yes, I see what you're saying that, you know, you are your intuition and, um, uh, uh, belief is, is sufficient. And, uh, I respect that as well, but I'm always looking for high and low for anything 
that will say, hey, you know what? Uh, you're kidding yourself, Doomcock, or you have been in error. Uh, I hate error. I hate error. So I am uh, always on the lookout for truth. And uh, that that is what I think we need a lot more of that in this world. Uh, I think yeah, we really I need a lot more of, of open-mindedness. And people, you know, there's this, this sad kind of meme out there you know this fake news meme where like any any fact or discovery that contradicts your worldview you just, ah, it's just fake news uh that's the death of discourse that's the death of reason uh if if we live in a universe where everything can simply be dismissed as fake news that you don't like then your mind is closed open your mind that's what I say in, in the opening of the Exo Zone. Open your eyes and open your mind to that region that lies beyond the realm of the known. Keep it open. The universe is an amazing place, way weirder than we give it credit for. And uh, I think it's delightful. I think it's delightful. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff we talk about. That's why we do the Exo Zone. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's why we do the show. We are seekers of wisdom and truth, Gary. Yeah, and, uh, I don't wake up in the morning. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I don't roll out of my rack convinced of anything. Yes, uh, I, yes. Uh, I, I'm pretty convinced there's a, a bunch of woke crap going on in Hollywood. That's pretty well, obvious. Yeah. <laughs> but well, I no, uh, some things you can be convinced of, but yep. able to to reset one's contradictory. Uh, evidence yeah the great secrets of life and uh you know the meaning yeah. of the life the universe and everything it's i'm ooh, i am completely open on that one absolutely um, but i wake up every single morning and the first thing my eyes pop open and i say star trek discovery sucks yes it's just you know i just bolt up like like uh <laughs> you know like what's his name uh george uh clooney in in oh brother where art thou he bolts up right and instead of saying my hair i say star trek discovery sucks and then I weep a little bit, and then I get up and, and get some coffee. Um, D Dapper Dan, right? Dapper, yeah. <laughs> he's a Dapper Dan man. He's a Dapper Dan man. I, I can't help it. Uh, no, so there I, are some I, things I, that are metaphysical certitudes, uh, like Star Trek Discovery yes. sucks. Uh, Kurtzman will never do a good Star Trek episode. Uh, things like that, you know, sure. But if he did it, I would have to revise my... Uh, my cosmological view right right but it's hard uh blue eyed scorpio with a 499 super chat thank you blue 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 eyed scorpio says conspiracy theory was a cia term implemented to discredit people by making it seem crazy to talk about certain things part of a psyop damn right damn right this whole damn thing about conspiracy theory, slandering uh, free thinkers like us, Gary, as conspiracy theorists, is a way to end the conversation again. It is a substitute for reason. It is a substitute for discourse and discussion and debate. It closes the door to views of reality that are uh, contrary to, uh, to the orthodoxy. Uh, as Galileo was once contradictory to the orthodoxy, as every fucking person that has broken ground in science and in uh, in, in thought, in reason, uh, has been uh, labeled a a, uh, a a heretic, a conspiracy theorist, a, a liar, a madman by uh, the ordinary, um, you know, little little minds, the smaller minds uh, that that tend to. Uh, be jealous of, of people that make large leaps like, like Galileo. Don't you think? Yeah. I, um, yes. And, uh, I mean, I listen to a lot of people. The thing is sometimes the person with that message isn't the best person either. Uh, cause sure. I'm thinking about people who are influential early in my life, but the more I found out about them, it's like, uh, you know, I, was, I used to be a big William Burroughs guy, right? Mm -hmm. Loved William Burroughs. But the more I found out about William Burroughs, it's like, meh. But, you know, some of his stuff got through to me uh, and and not in the best way either. It just opened my eyes to a few things. I won't say it's like it was great news. Um, like uh, I'm seeing, uh, well, I don't want to get political on this. I'm seeing what's trending on Twitter right now, which is really 
making me happy as hell, but, uh, <laughs> it won't last for long. It won't last for long. <laughs> well, good. Uh, so yeah, it, it's, uh, it, yeah, it, it's just, it depends on the person and the message. And, and, you know, we try to have an exchange of ideas here. That's what we try to do on the exo zone. So, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's okay if you if you think it's a little bullocks. Sometimes I, you know, I think a lot of the stuff I watch in the paranormal is, is a lot of bullocks, and and uh, the really fascinating stuff gets brushed over because uh, yeah. we want to go to uh, Mars, you know, with underground base and DH people on Mars or some crap like that, you know. And and there's people who, who believe that stuff. And that's fine. I don't, you know, I'm not going to judge you. I don't care. I just I personally don't. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it, anything as, like. The, the super spiritual metaphysical consciousness stuff. I'm still learning about that. Uh, I, that's, that's that, uh, cause you know, I've been kicked out of three high schools. I didn't go to, I didn't go to university. I didn't talk to philosophers or even read about them. I learned them through them through Monty Python. <laughs> so, right. uh, I learned their names about, you know, a soccer skit or a football skit, sorry, UK, uh, with, uh, with, uh, philosophers playing football uh that's that's how i learned it and it would just be me and my friends dropping a lot of acid and and talking about this stuff i mean we weren't like yeah we were nerds so we weren't tripping at you know balls with a bunch of girls and stuff we were sitting there talking about you know the meaning of life at 17 years old with our brains dripping out our ears on mushrooms and stuff but that's that's how it started you know mm-hmm. uh but th- yeah I, I i can't say i'm super educated on the subject obviously not no, but I mean, I'm just saying, and I'm not advocating any particular thing, but I am saying, uh, look, any any labels are the enemy of of free thought. Oh, we're it, seeing that now. They're trying yeah. to label groups, not just individuals. Our, our entire, I mean, you know, Doomcock is hundreds of years old or not. We don't know. But my generation, Generation X, uh, fought against label labels. That, that's mm-hmm. when we were totally against that. But now I see my entire generation wanting to put large swaths of people into voting brackets. That's all this is. Right. Uh, to make them a, a, what's the word, proletariat or something, a group of people. Mm-hmm. And for uh, the means of, uh, well, t- tearing down a system, tearing down a system. And they're, and they're entering every facet to do that. And they're doing it through labels. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Did. And labels end discussions. Labels simplify, oversimplify uh, human beings and their views uh, in a lot of cases. I mean, sometimes people are simple, but I mean, you know, when we're interested in, in discourse like here, uh, trying to silence us with uh, the uh, the label of conspiracy theorists, uh, yeah, you can go take a flying leap into Lake FU, Okay. Uh, I which, just, which was created by the CIA, by the way, that, was, that whole label was created by the CIA. It's strictly it, to, to diffuse and debunk any arguments that could, uh, go against the, the narrative. Exactly. Or the agency or their operations like MK ultra. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Damn I mean, right. like it was invented to, I mean, okay. If, if, if ufology was so harmless, why did the CIA feel the need to infiltrate it? And I've heard their mm-hmm. arguments. I know them all. Okay. And some of them, one of them is actually, I mean, I could buy it. Right. Uh, they were afraid that these people might stumble on some super secret information and the Russians and stuff. Well, the Russians haven't been around in a while. Okay. So why are they still messing with these people? And we've had people, people who've worked for the government come out and say, we used to mess with these people. Why? Why? If they, they're harmless, then just let them do their thing. Uh, it's 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 like with everything, the Barbara Streisand effect. You bring more attention to it, it's going to make me wonder what's really up, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Blue-Eyed Scorpio, for that, uh, that super chat. Well said. Yep. The Talons of Wayne Chiang has unleashed a Dumacorn in the chat. Thank you, Talons of Wayne Chiang. Uh, that is awesome. Uh, Fizzenthorpe with a $20 super chat. Hail Fizzenthorpe says, hail. Do you guys believe as the sun ages and grows into a red giant that life will migrate to the planets beyond earth and the habitable, habitable zone we enjoy today? Was there life on planets between us and the sun in the past? Um, I'm pessimistic 
Fizzenthorpe. Uh, I do not like the current state of space exploration. I don't like the current state of humanity in terms of its cognitive abilities. I, I can't believe the the mundane, insane BS uh, that's going on on Earth. I don't like the corporate control over media and thought. I think that uh, civilization is being dumbed down uh, and, and trying to produce a, a race of compliant, uh, you know, consumers. I don't know. I'm not really optimistic about a United Federation of Planets in the future. I could be wrong, but I will ask Gary, uh, was there life on planets between us and the sun in the past? Uh, what do you think? So Venus... Um... Maybe on Venus, maybe, uh, and it, and we're talking about life in general, microbial and whatever. I do, I do I think there was a civilization. I don't know. It's a, it's an awfully hot planet, but it's clear something happened to that planet, uh, and it's it's bizarre. Everything about it is bizarre. Maybe, uh, but I'm not too sure. I think I absolutely convinced there was life on Mars at one time. Yeah. Yeah, and may still be. Maybe a civilization too. Yeah. So, and maybe we're Martians. Maybe we're uh we're uh yeah, maybe we are refugees from something that happened there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I there's agree. a giant asteroid field uh out there that could have been a planet. Mm -hmm. We 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 don't know, but it could have been. And we know there's a lot, I talked about it earlier on. There's a lot of evidence that something happened in the solar system cataclysmic. And, uh, I, I would love to find out what it was uh, someday, but, yeah. um, and, and, and some people think, uh, that there is that that's kind of written into our mythology, uh, what happened to the solar system. So, and I, th I think there is some truth to that. So. Absolutely. Uh, so there's your answer, Fizz and Thorpe. I do believe there was life on planets between us and the sun in the, in the past, although I believe it probably, well, hell, there might be life right now, Fizz and Thorpe, but not only on Mars, but on uh, moons of, of Jupiter like Europa. Uh, you know, they've hypothesized that, uh, you know, it, it's got liquid down there. And, and the if there's the, a heat the in the core, yep. it, could, it could be a, a temperate zone in in the middle of Europa that uh, could support life, Gary. Didn't yeah. they theorize? Yes. No, I, I, I um, was it Europa or the other moon where they, I think it was Europa where they saw the water like squirting out or mm, spewing out in the space. Yeah. Uh, from was it the, Io or? I think it was Io and it was the volcanic activity, meaning if the, if it's warm down there, yeah, there could be a whole ocean full of like. So uh, weird. Weird whales or something. Um, and there is, I think they theorize there's a temperate zone in the upper atmosphere of Venus where it's like, uh, right. Where there could be a band of, of life. There could be, uh, aerial creatures, uh, could be floating jellyfish type type things or manta rays that fly through the uh, atmosphere. Like they do through water. It'd be very weird. Uh, it's, it's a strange, strange universe. Well, isn't there a theory that, or something about octopus, the octopi that they're, they're not, uh, indigenous or something like that. Didn't I, I heard that somewhere. That would be weird. Yeah. That would be very, very weird, but quite possible. Uh, Cecil Neal with a $50 Canadian super chat. Thank you, Cecil Neal, sir. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, he is saying here. Uh, with this very generous super chat, we really appreciate that. Cecil says, Hail Doomcock. I believe Gary missed my virgin super chat on Sunday. Not positive. Uh, here it is. Uh, so he's, he's reposting it. Uh, Nerdrotic and Overlord DVD. I hope you received the Audible book I sent to you. Uh, if it is okay, if I send another copy for you to forward to Doomcock. It's okay with me. Yeah, I made. I probably missed that one. I'll I'll go back and check. Yeah, I'll go. I'll, I'll make sure it's on the next square up, or I'll bring it up on Sunday. Uh, but yeah, I, that's fine. I I did. Uh, did you gift it to the email? 
Yeah, Cecil, are, are you in the chat? If you are, uh, would you call it to uh, yeah. my or Gary attention by saying right. at Overlord DVD or at Nerd Erotic and uh, let us know. I, yeah. I, I mean, he said it was a virgin super chat on Sunday. So it was his first super chat. Oh, sorry. Uh, he says, I hope you received the audible book I sent to you, uh, Gary. So he probably sent, sent it. Email. Probably. Yeah. Uh, could you let us know, Cecil Neal? Yeah, I'll check too. Check Are you right still now. out there? Uh, if you would send us, please, a just a little message here. We're watching the chat, and uh, let us know. Uh, we can give you a a better answer. Uh, Nicholas Horton says the giant octopi are related and descendants uh, to Harvey Cthulhu. No, no. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Would I, would I have to pay child support for them? No, not for the octopus. Oh, then maybe. <laughs> Uh, James Dugan says Enceladus has the geysers. Ah, Enceladus. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, James Dugan. Uh, Louis the Plank. Hey, it's Louis the Plank. You want to get rid of a guy, Louis the Plank. You know, whack him like, you know, like a two by four. When Louis targets you, you're like, you're like whacked by a two by four. That's why they call him Louis the Plank with a $5 super chat. Thank you, Louis. Says, hail Doomcock and Gary, aside from your awesome show, do you recognize, recommend any books or sites regarding UFOs and other phenomenon? Uh, I, God, there's so many. Uh, Timothy Good has done a number of mm -hmm. really good books, like Above Top Secret, uh, Alien Bases. Um, you know, of course, there's the classical works of, uh, uh, you know, uh, Zachariah Sinchin. Uh, and, um, day after Roswell, Philip Corso. Right. Right. Uh, and Cecil Neal says, uh, yes, send it to Gary's email or audible. I'll check so, my audible. So there you go. It is in your email and absolutely. I'd love to, uh, to see it. Cecil Neal. Thank you, my friend. Um, yeah, uh, so any other books? Uh, Flying Saucer's Serious Business was one of the first UFO books I ever read. It has such amazing photos in it, and uh, it's well done. Uh, it's an old one, but I um, uh, I would uh, go ahead and uh, recommend yeah, that still. as far as um, just a, an author who's just damn consistent, uh, Richard Dolan, just get anything by Richard Dolan. And, um, if you like, uh, ancient civilization stuff, of course, Graham Hancock, mm -hmm. uh, David Hatcher Childress, uh, he's done work. Uh, David Hatcher Childress has done work on, on all, on pretty much everything. Uh, but he's mostly kind of an ancient aliens, ancient, uh, mysteries kind of guy. And he's, he's a, a rich, a rich kid of a lawyer who got to travel the world from when he was, uh, a teenager. And he is one of the he's you know he, he's willing to believe a lot of weird stuff but he's he's really good he's really good at this stuff and unfortunately well not fortunately unfortunately it's a, you know uh sometimes rich kids no you know do something positive uh with their dad's money and they go out and they become researchers and it works you know so i'm all for it uh i could say you know giorgio sukulos is kind of the same thing mm -hmm. uh and yeah uh but definitely definitely richard dolan uh, he's he's yeah. number one for me for you also uh, uh i like uh, richard c hoagland's uh monuments of mars and uh also uh the dark moon it's it's a book called dark moon which is all about the the moon landing and uh ufos and stuff like that i find that uh, a fascinating book as well um Sebastian Anon with a $5 super chat. Thank you, Sebastian. Says, check out Anton Petrov's YouTube channel. He did a few videos on Venus and Mars once being habitable and that Mars once had rings. Well, I guess the nuclear conflagration up there uh, blew the rings uh, clear to hell, which is a, a damn shame. That would have been something to see, wouldn't it? Yep. Uh, okay, so Anton Petrov's YouTube channel. Uh, thank you, Sebastian Anon. I cool. will. I will take a look at it. Dark Mission. Thank you, Cardinal Sin. Yes, Dark Mission. That's that was the name of the book. Yeah. What was it? Monuments of Mars? Was that? Did he also do that, or was it always called Dark Mission? Yeah. Okay. It was Dark Mission. I've, that's a good book. Richard Hoagland. Yeah. Yeah. 
And uh, Mike Barra was his co-author on a couple of things, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Barra's good. Uh, thank you, Sebastian Anon. Uh, Nicholas Horton with a five-pound super chat. Thank you, my friend. Says, an interesting mystery is, what are the statues on Easter Island uh, designed after? Mm. Uh, I don't I don't know. Um, they, they look very similar to other statues found in other parts of the world. God, I forgot what they're called again. The Moai, Moai or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think the most fascinating thing about those statues is the ones that are buried up to their waist and that are kind of crooked. So there's an argument can be made that they purposely buried some of them because some of them go like 30 feet down into the 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 sediment but there's others that it's almost looked like that there was like some kind of flooding or they have been there so long that the the sediment just rot, rose around it you know and uh there's an argument to be made it's such the place is an absolute weird mystery the fact that those things were made at all uh the indigenous people didn't have a written language but then they found that there was something with the written language there previously mm. and maybe they were around before the oceans rose remember twelve thousand years ago the oceans were 400 feet lower 400 feet whoa lower. so that wow. is a lot and uh there was a lot more land there was uh, uh alaska and siberia were connected uh, completely by this giant land bridge um, down in southeastern Asia. There was a ton more land. Uh, yeah, and 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 uh, look at how many underwater structures and towns there are just in the Mediterranean alone. It's like a hundred in the Mediterranean, a hundred. So, what uh. happened? I mean, like uh, you know, the ocean level has been pretty much the same for you know thousands of years but not a 400 foot difference and when you have these giant uh, monoliths that they you can see were hand cut by man in the middle of the mediterranean you know mm -hmm. it's, it's bizarre it's bizarre it's and being extremely there, weird dude when i went there and you see you know uh the difference between the greek and the Ro roman ruins because i was able to see uh, on uh on on sicily there's a i forgot what they were called but uh there's there's Greek Romans to ro to Roman ru ruin uh, uh, Romans Greek ruins to Roman ruins, and you can see them, and they're hundreds, thousands of years apart. You can see the difference in stone that they used and everything. It was mm -hmm. fascinating, and mm -hmm. and the fact that they're still standing now is incredible. Yeah, uh, and they're all over the place, and there's like caves dug in cliffs and they were making new discoveries when I, I was there a year ago and they had just made some new discoveries and they they uh theorize now that there was a whole civilization of people there prior to the greeks that they don't even know who the hell they were but they know <laughs> they were there weird huh yep damn weird uh and i've got we've got another story that we'll wrap up with uh here in just a little bit along those lines uh but uh, Cisco kid with a $10 super chat. Uh, it just, it just gave me a little emoji. Uh, thank you very, very much. Cisco kid. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, and, and thank you for being here on the XO zone. Hope you're having fun. Uh, sassy Marie with a black cat super sticker. Thank you. Sassy Marie. I love cats. I miss my black cat. My, my black cat was named, uh, Lolly and she was so sweet. She was amazing. She would, we would let her out, you know, uh, and uh, she would go out there and uh, she would uh, climb the tree, get on the roof and then, uh, and then go meow, 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 mm -hmm. until I got a ladder and, and, and pulled her down. So there you go. Uh, Sassy Marie, thank you for the black cat. I very much appreciate that. Louis the Plank with a $2 super chat. Hail Louis the Plank says, any chance that would turn me into the Hulk? Uh, the gamma yeah. radiation? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> uh, you don't think so? No, human torch maybe. But uh, Yeah, no. so human torch. It, 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 otherwise, we'd have uh, Hulks running around all over the place, wouldn't we? Yep. Where we do, do have human torches. They just never make it. 
And they never make it. They never make it. Uh, spontaneous human combustion is an actual thing. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? Yeah, that is bizarre. And uh, have you, have you, has anybody ever, if you guys haven't read up on spontaneous human combustion, it's pretty bizarre. There and might it be absolutely some... is genuine, don't you yeah. think? I mean, there's no doubt about it. No, there's the, no because they uh, the the people if if you catch on fire, you're going to flop around and run and stuff because you're in absolute pain, like the worst pain imaginable. Like these people were found with just sitting there. Well, what was left of them? Just sitting there yeah. in chairs and stuff. It's yeah. really and it, it doesn't spark other fires. It doesn't burn down the building. They just go flump right there and there yeah um i don't know if there's been any recent cases though I, it's not something i've looked into recently so in the last couple of years yeah maybe it was uh you know german science at its finest during world war ii or something you know just something out there because i mean you always see black and white pictures of it i don't think i've ever seen uh so it used to happen i don't know maybe it was the diet maybe maybe thoughts do have mass and they are flammable so you know, maybe maybe you have a a, a a a a brain fart, and it gets hit by a you know lit by a mind storm, uh, a brainstorm, and and then it just uh, you know just goes up. Don't don't think too hard, folks. Don't think too hard. Uh, Inquisitor B three one two with a five dollar super chat. Thank you, Inquisitor. It says like the Sphinx being much older than the pyramids, and the fact that it doesn't have its original head. It doesn't have its original head. Is that true, Gary? The Sphinx does not have its original head, no. What the hell happened? What was the head like, do you think? Well, there is speculation it was the head of a lion or the head of a dog. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm not sure. It started out, I forgot what that form was. It's a dolmen. It's a form of land. It was already there. And they carved a lion at the time. And when uh, the pharaohs came around, they carved their head in it. For one, it, it doesn't match at all. It's like way too small. And you can just tell that the original thing, what, what, what was originally there was bigger. And the Sphinx is way older than the pyramids. Robert Schock has done the science on this. And I'm pretty convinced because uh, it, it's based on rain and it doesn't rain there like ever. Uh, it used to rain regularly, regularly there phew, five, 6,000 years ago, maybe longer, 10,000 years ago. Yeah. Uh, I know Weird. the desert Weird. used to be, well, there used to, uh, that, that whole desert is, is uh, that's cropped up recently, like geologically speaking recently, five, 6,000 years old. That's it. Damn. So it's bizarre. It's bizarre. What caught, what created that desert? uh was it uh, a tsunami or i mean who knows who knows if you look at it it's bizarre it's bizarre. damn bizarre yeah but uh there are competing theories on what it, the head was before and i i i'm open to both of them honestly because i've uh because i've heard the arguments on both sides and they're both pretty good to be honest with you so uh but uh, um if a good channel to go for that is uh, a guy named chuck who who lives in vegas and it's uh it's c faps 7865 and he just does ancient mystery stuff he's kind of a, a quote-unquote student of randall carlson kind of like i am i'm a kind of a randall carlson head and uh he does a bunch of videos on those that if you want to go check it out he's he's got some pretty good research on it he's just uh, i think he's a guy who lives alone and spends a lot of time on uh he's one of those google earth guys who just goes over Google Earth looking for, because um, you can find stuff. It's pretty easy to find if you take a lot of time. You could see where old, if you go out in the desert of, of Egypt, you could see where there were structures in the sand. Um, and listen, satellite archaeology has, has brought archaeology up uh, a lot. Uh, we're able to see things now that we weren't able to see before. Uh, and it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Uh, who knows what will be revealed? What is on earth that is still to be discovered? Very, very strange. If you want to hear, I mean, it's real life stuff, but if you want to like a, a, a bit of a laugh, um, this uh, FBI, 
by the way, if you're worried about stuff and you're worried about the people that are going, uh, I mean, not, not the genuine protesters, of course, but the people who just want to cause trouble, uh, they're, they're not really that bright. Um, FBI tracked down white woman who set car cop cars alight by tracing custom t-shirt she wore at a Philadelphia demonstration to Etsy, which led them to her LinkedIn and Poshmark accounts. <laughs> 80, 80 years in prison. She's looking at 80 years. In oh prison. my God. Wow. Holy shit. Yep. Ah, uh, well, oh my oh. God, I'm going to wear my Etsy t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid ass. Oh, oh. Oh, like if I ran out there with like a nerd rotic shirt on. And a mask. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to run out there. I need a disguise. I know I'll wear my Doomcock helmet. Right. Your hashtag oh. without respect. We reject while yes. you're going to, I don't know, riot inside of a mall in Arizona. <laughs> I, I'm a I'm I'm the future ruler of Earth. I deserve to heist this pair of shoes. Like, yes. You dumb shit. Oh, it's not a world of men, machine. It's not a world of men. Uh, Sandra Feliziano, thank you for the Doom of Corn uh, in the chat. And thank you, Jobu's Rum, as well. Two Doom of Corns, uh, two great people. Thank you both for those. Diego Flores with uh, a 16.90 uh, Peruvian souls uh, has a question uh, for you. Uh, he says, Gary, are we going to talk about the screams? That thing still haunts me. Oh, this, uh, I think yeah. the screams in the, you know, the, the, the sky. The yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. I thought somebody had emailed me with an answer for those. I didn't get to it yet. I almost don't want it to get answered. I don't want to hear the answer for it. I kind of like really want to know. I, know. I, I always need everything figured out, you know? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, there are definitely strange sounds in the world. And I think there probably is a very scientific, uh, it's probably got something. And I've said that I've said it's, it's probably, and I said it when we were talking about it, it could be the magnet, uh, magnetosphere and something in the atmosphere uh, uh, it, that creates that sound uh, for sure. I don't think it's um Cthulhu, you know, no. on its way in. Uh, but uh, yeah, I th but they're still strange. It's absolutely strange. Uh, and those were those were pretty good, unless the guy faked it all. I, that's a pretty good fake if he did. Could have could have been faked. Um, it also sounded to me a little bit like it could be sound bouncing uh, between you know the buildings. Uh, somebody. Uh, making those sounds or watching something or playing something. And it was kind of just uh, eerily kind of wafting into the night at a, at a time where it seemed weird. I don't know. Uh, I just don't know. Yeah. Cause it's, it's really different than those trumpet. Yeah, uh, it is. There's the trumpet sounds and then it's followed by a sound that uh, the best describes somebody like pulling some, uh, I don't know, like a dumpster or something without wheels along asphalt, you know, it's just metal on, on, uh, on concrete or asphalt sound. It's, it's, it's a screechy noise. And that noise has sounded the same in Russia and South America and Canada, Canada here, there's tons of videos from Canada. So I think it has a, something to do with proximity towards, uh, you know, I, a far northern countries because you hear more of it in Russia and Canada. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's there's something to it. It's probably scientific, though. It, it probably is, uh, but not quantum physics. So I'm I'm at a loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I I know more about quantum physics than I know about how to make cool bubbly stuff on, you know like Mr. Science's, uh, you know, kitchen or something. Uh, Michael Henley says the strange screams are the women when they hear Doomcock rehearsing for Friday Night Frolics. Wow. You mean just when I go like, those fingers in my hair that sly come hither stare. That strips my conscience bare. It's witchcraft. Stuff like that. 
Uh, it could be, could be. Are wow. they screaming in pain or are they screaming out of something else? I don't know. You don't. Uh, <laughs> it was a banshee, says Eric K. That's more yeah, likely. Obviously, <laughs> that's more likely. Uh, Shane O'Reilly with a two euro super chat. Thank you, Shane O'Reilly, says as guardians attack. Hail Shane O'Reilly. I want to send a shout out to Heel versus Babyface, uh, to Az. God bless you guys. Uh, you are absolutely, positively fantastic. Uh, and it's an honor to have you here today. Uh, Zach Lossel with a $1.99 super chat. Thank you, Zach. Says, didn't know this was a thing till now. Subbed. Hail. Thank you for subbing to my channel, Zach Lossel. And uh, go sub to Doomcocks when you get a chance as well. Uh, and to Nerdronics as well. Uh, the address is being posted uh, in, in the chat. Uh, yes. Hail, Zach Lossel, and welcome to the channel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Enzo Surreal? Surreally? Surreal? Uh, Enzo, I'll just say Enzo, uh, with a $20 super chat, which is very generous. Thank you, Enzo. It says, hail, fellas. Have you seen the Netflix series Into the Night? Uh, it's about an airliner full of survivors trying to stay on the dark side of the earth because the sun suddenly starts emitting deadly radiation. Shoot. Uh, wow. No, I, uh... I have not. Have you seen that, Gary? No, never heard of it. That's weird. Uh, if I was, if I was there, man, that's just doom. That's just doom. I mean, you never be able to. Uh, I mean, what is it? You're just trying to to uh, survive long enough to uh, drink your way through the the stores on the uh, on the plane. I mean, shit. You know, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't you just. How long would you want to go? Would you even want to keep going on, on, a, on a situation like that? Would you just want to, ah, fuck it. I'm just jumping out of the plane or, or something. Unless there's a lot of women on the, the thing that, you know, you could get join, you know, multiple memberships of the mile high club. And, you know, maybe somebody smuggled some, uh, some, uh, you know, wacky tobacco on the flight, or, you know, maybe you've got a, a, a pile of, of steak dinners back there that, you know, is still to eat. It's like, well, shit. I mean, you're, you ain't, that's not a, a survival strategy. Uh, so I, I don't know. That's, that's pretty weird. Um, Enzo Surreal says into the night has a few technical issues, but I still enjoyed the story. Uh, flashbacks are a bit lostish without all the cosmic non answers. Well, thank God, because I hate, hate, hate lost with a, with a fierce passion. Yeah. That, like, uh, how does radiation kill and not stick around? You know what I mean? It's because yeah. they, they land at parts. I'm looking at the trailer a little bit now. Interesting. So it's, it's, it's foreign language. I don't know what country it's from, but, uh, it's well, uh, interesting. Uh, thank you for the link. I'll, I'll take a look at yeah. it. Why not? That sounds interesting. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Enzo, thank you very much for, for that information and for that super chat. Michael Henley with a $13 and 48 cents. Uh, super chat. Thank you, Michael. He says, I thought we might have to go full Spartan at first against the Asgardians. I had a feeling they were on our side. I was thinking, well, it's uh, it's As, but, you know, maybe maybe it could be some derivative group or side group or something. But, uh, dude, uh, As is always welcome. Uh, the Asgardians, God bless. Uh, we have discovered new friends, and I'm, I'm very, very pleased. Thank you, Michael Henley. Although I'm glad you were prepared to go full Spartan against invaders. We must repel invaders at times. It's just the way our civilization survives. Uh, crazy Cat Guy with a $5 super chat. Thank you, Crazy Cat Guy. It says, finally catching another Exozone Live. It's all about weirdness and strangeness, so I feel at home here. So do I. So do I. I absolutely do. Agent Pepsi One with a $2 super chat. Thank you, Agent Pepsi One. It is delightful to see you here. Thou amazing super spy. Says USN footage. US Air Force pilots say, vid yes, audio fake. What? <clears throat> so Agent Pepsi One is saying that the uh, Navy footage uh, the, the pilots are saying that the video is true, but the, um, 
the 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 audio is fake. Have you heard anything about this, Gary? I heard that initially, but no, the the pilots have confirmed it all in the TV series. Okay, well, they, they, um, they, the pilots sit down and say, "Yep, that's my buddy right there saying that." I recognize uh, his voice, so he might, unless he's lying. Holy crap! Well, I I doubt he's lying. So, yeah. uh, Agent Pepsi One, uh, perhaps you have been uh, hearing disinformation. Uh, it has been confirmed by the pilots themselves now. So I think it's okay. And by the way, we are only 10 away from 500 likes, which is really, really good for an exo zone. So if anybody hasn't, uh, licked the like button or pushed the thumbs up button, I think it would be a fantastic thing to do. Send a message to YouTube. Hey, we want some high weirdness. Don't, 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 don't ghost us. Don't ghost us. Uh, yeah, that was on the, um, God. There's two different ones. There was a, there was a show called contact and I'm blanking on the other one, but it's by to the stars and they interviewed uh Rainer and others and they confirmed the voices on, uh, on one of them. Uh, and I heard it was fake originally. Uh, mm -hmm. and people were saying, and I know some of the people are going pilots don't talk like that. They absolutely do by the way. Um, so now might it not match? Yeah, I don't know. Could somebody be lying? I, I do not know. I do, I not, do know. not know. But I, I, I believe it's fairly straightforward at this point. I do. Uh, I, I believe in the footage. Uh, pilots were there. It happened. Uh, so there you go. Um, thank you, crazy cat guy, for that. Carl Page with a $2 super chat saying, Exo Zone, yes. Damn right. Exo Zone, yes. Next, uh, next time we do it, it'll be on Gary's channel, and we will have just as much fun uh, as we're having today. Who knows? Maybe even more. Uh, Jay Paula, 821, with a $10 super chat. Thank you, Jay Paula. It's good to see you again, brother. Says, I want to say hi before I head out. If ancients are real, I guess Mike Dawson was right after all. Hope will eventually find demons, angels, gods, and supernatural beasts very soon. I hope we don't. <laughs> I hope we don't. Do you know who Mike Dawson is, uh, Gary? No, no. I don't I'll either. Look into it, though. If ancients are real, I guess Mike Dawson was right after all. I, I hope we do not find demons, angels, gods, or supernatural beasts. That would be very, very bad. That would that would be very, very bad. I, that would not be a good day for me, anyway. Uh, I, don't, I don't. I don't. You know, generally uh, posit those things. Uh, with a whole lot of existence, or if they do exist, they're no more uh, separate from the consciousness of the universe than uh, tigers and lions and bears. Oh my. Uh, Taker610 with a $2 super chat. Thank you, Taker. Says, come on, Doomcock. We we know all these UFOs are you. Ooh, yeah, it could be. That's possible. It's been rumored, but I don't believe it. I, I don't know, Taker610. I cannot comment at this time. I cannot. Uh, Rod Thunderheart with a $2 super chat. Thank you, Rod. Says, hail my liege. Link to UFO library in your Twitter. Thank you, Rod Thunderheart. I will be pouring through that. I I think I saw it, but I, I for some reason, I've never gone and looked. So I think that's very exciting. Very exciting. Uh, Sarah B with a $5 super chat. Thank you, Sarah. Says, hail Gary. Hail DC. Great stream. Question for you both. What event caused you personally to believe and pursue ET life and uh, UFOs? Well, quite simply, I found books as a kid uh, about UFOs, saw photographic evidence. Of course, my father told me, well, son, you can't believe everything you read. Um, so, but, <laughs> you know, I, I, it was my driving curiosity. Uh, it's like, okay, well, you say that, dad, then I'm going to look for uh, more proof, uh, pro or con, and spent my whole life basically doing that. Uh, what personally led me to believe in extraterrestrial life, math, uh, the vastness of manifestation, the universe, uh, all those stars out there, I do not believe that there is no other life out there. Uh, Gary, how about you? Yeah, it was... Um... Watching in, in Search Of, I think that started it for me mm -hmm. when I was a kid. I watched In Search Of, because uh, because Spock uh, was did the voice did the narrating on it. Yeah, and that got me thinking about it from when I was a little kid, and I was into Bigfoot, and you know Bigfoot was in Six Million Dollar Man, 
And then I saw the uh, Betty and Barney Hill um, docudrama on TV with James Earl Jones. Uh, and that was pretty fascinating. And then I'd always been into it. Yeah, it was It was always, uh, I watched Project Blue Book when I was a kid. And it just, I don't know, it, it just, my interest grew and grew until I heard uh, Art Bell for the very first time. And uh, that was it. And But no personal experiences um i've had relatives who've uh, my uncle told me a bunch of stories which uh which played into it and uh he was in the military he's a career military man um and yeah it, it, but but no like one thing it just it was an interest and in, and i i don't know it's my i'm i i, I have a curiosity i love I mm -hmm. want to find the truth of things. I, I've, I have had a lot, maybe too much time to think about like uh, the meaning of life and why are we here? It's just something that my brain is programmed for. I don't know if I'll ever find answers, but I'm, uh, it, I just, I go to it like a, like a moth to a, to a light. If mm -hmm. I see stuff like that, it's just, it piques my interest. So, but Absolutely. yeah, it's just over time, over time. Well, it's the same reason that we're geeks. I mean, we love uh you know interesting cool stuff i mean and what's more interesting and cool than ufos and bigfoot and cryptozoological specimens and the possibility of alternate dimensions and uh i mean it's the same reason we like batman and uh you know comics and superheroes and star trek and star wars and doctor who it's that that sense of wonder uh which translates not only from from fiction but uh into real life uh, I think it's, it's, you know, that simple. We are predisposed to be imaginative. And uh, I'm really glad that that's the case uh, for both of us. Uh, Eskimono Fono with a 499 Super Chat. Thank you, Eskimono Fono. Says, if humans have the tech to make those UFOs, I'm afraid of what they are hiding. I don't believe that it's us, Eskimono Fono. I just don't believe it. It would revolutionize everything. I uh, and, and the military wouldn't just sit on it. They, they'd use it against other countries. Uh, they'd give it to uh, industry, license it to industry, uh, you know, which would uh, change the world in terms of transporting goods. I mean, think of how much, uh, you know, fuel and, and time is wasted uh, trucking things uh, across the USA. Uh, how much more efficient would it be to just be able to fly that shit anywhere you want it in minutes? Come on. Uh, the, the uh, I mean, not only military applications, but the boost to our economy would be phenomenal. Yeah, it would put some things out of work, but the 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 things that it would enable uh, would be revolutionary. And mm -hmm. uh, I just I yeah. just don't think it's us. Uh, yeah, it's 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 just as okay. If you're thinking about well, that, it's aliens. That's too fantastical. That's too ridiculous. It would be equally ridiculous if it was us. It, it really would. Okay. So we would have to have faked it, faked out a bunch of our own military with multi billions of dollars of equipment, putting people's lives in danger, which you listen, they've done shit like that in the, in the back in the past. Uh, it would also have to have this technology be hiding it, have a bunch of people who could keep that secret forever. Uh, and then like, why are we hiding it? Mm -hmm. Why, why would you hide something like that? Uh, I, I, if you the would government initially... has that technology, why not flaunt it? I mean, it's not like, you know, maybe you could make the argument that it would crush our economy because we have this, you know, just like if we, the electric car, uh, or the conspiracy theory out there, which, uh, not conspiracy, but the, uh, the urban legend out there, which could be true that there's a battery that never dies, that, uh, one of the battery companies has a patent up because they right. don't ruin the battery industry, maybe, but that's equally as fan, like crazy. You have to go through so many other steps. So I just, I try to think of things logically and I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong when we yeah. you know, we'll find out later that it was us. I just, again, I'm just going off of the information I'm given and the radar operator, who seems very credible to me under multiple interviews, has told the same story, has said that it went from the surface of the ocean to the atmosphere. And not just one of them, hundreds of them in three quarters of a second with no sonic boom. Mm. 
It's astonishing. And but it's it would called be unidentified. A- the show's called uh, Age of Pepsi One. The show's called Unidentified. If you have like Sling, uh, it's on History Channel. Mm-hmm. So I think it's on their on demand. Uh, listen, a lot of it is the same video strung out over like six, six episodes. So you might want to fast forward through a lot of stuff, but listen to the interviews they do with, uh, some of the pilots. Um, and yeah, yeah they could be lying. They could, everybody could be lying. Uh, there's gotta be a point where, you know, Doomcock was talking about with the fake news stuff. I, I agree. There's gotta be a point where it's like, well, you know, I gotta believe some people. I just can't think everything is bullshit and everything's a conspiracy. And, and believe me, I'm the first guy to think that. I'm the first guy to think there's something up with this. There's yeah. something else going on here. And I will mostly agree on most of that stuff on this one. Um, I do think there's something nefarious going on. I just don't know what. And we we did a show on like, what do you guys think is really going on? And we heard some of your answers, which is pretty interesting. So. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it is a, it, unidentified was really the heart of disclosure they went over it and over it and over it in such a low-key way that they were making it boring uh trying to uh make it very pedestrian and and it worked it worked because then six months later or whatever when they officially released it and declared that uh these objects exist and are maneuvering in earth's atmosphere hardly anyone blinked it's amazing it's just a weird psyop weird psyop uh raziel mutant with a five dollar super chat thank you raziel mutant says my uncle worked for the coast guard in kodiak alaska and he said that aliens exist and they would see them up there in the sky all the time and and my uncle said aliens exist yeah did he yeah yeah he did wow well there you go see so uh you know there's so much uh so much um you know, uh, anecdotal evidence out there along with photographic evidence and stuff. I just know that, that it's a real phenomenon. I just do. Uh, Rod Thunderheart with a $10 Canadian super chat. Thank you, Rod says, hail guys to quote Hobbes from Calvin and Hobbes. I think the surest sign that intelligent life exists elsewhere is that none of it has tried to contact us. (laughs) Well, uh, other than the probing, isn't that contact? Well, it is, I guess, if you do it right. Damn right. Uh, Hail Rod Thunderheart. I think that's uh, funny. Calvin and Hobbes was good. Uh, Thank you, Rod Thunderheart, very much, my friend. Uh, Savage Chill with a $20 super chat. Hail Savage Chill. Says, hail Doomcock and Nerdrotic. My weird add to this. I've heard among the theorists that the only reason ETs would make a show on Earth would be we're on the verge of self-destruction and realized humanity needs a belt beating to sober us up, huh? To go ahead and and say, hey, cut it out, you idiots. Well, I don't know, man. Uh, That's possible. I I mean, it just depends on if they're, where are they on the spectrum between, uh, you know, alien invaders like the Badoon in uh, Silver Surfer versus uh the watcher in fantastic four you know so are they uh you know crazed reptilian interventionists that want to conquer and shoot us the brotherhood of badoon or uh, are they the watcher uh what was his name utu utu uta the watcher I forget what his name was ut something uta utpa something like that uh, and I don't know the answer to that, Savage Chill, but you're you're quite right. They may simply, maybe we're seeing them because it, it's the quickening and everything is going to hell very, very shortly. It is possible, Savage Chill, Watu. sadly. It's Watu. Watu. U-A-A-T-U? Yeah, it's U-A-T-U. Okay. But it's pronounced Watu. Watu. Okay. Like Watu? That's weird. Uh, Noel Morrison with a $2 super chat. Thank you. Noel says, and this is why we love you guys. Thank you. Noel. Uh, we love you too. We love all of you guys very, very much. Uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, M dastardly with a te- a $20 super chat. Holy crap. Thank you. Oh, dastardly one says, uh, remember as far as possible and impossible technology goes, A little over 100 years ago, humans flying in planes was impossible. Now we have the ISS, 
who knows what another hundred or five hundred years will bring us. I, I think that's a that's a fair point, uh, M. Dastardly. I think that's a fair point, but I just don't believe that it exists now. We, we would not find out about this from our own government buzzing our own ships to go ahead and and uh, leak that information out to possible rivals. Uh, you know, I, I think we'd find out by, you know, invading some trouble spot or something and showing overwhelming power and force uh, that that would probably, you know, I mean, that's generally how we've announced these things. Uh, consider, you know, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Right. Uh, so, yeah, they're not going to waste time screwing around with the Nimitz. What kind of dicks, you know, <laughs> it's just some dick general just saying, I want to go ahead and show those naval boys that we've got their asses call, you know, cornered, uh, you know, Jack D Ripper, general Jack D Ripper with his, uh, cigar, feed me, man, drink, feed me. I just don't, I don't, I don't know, but you're right. I'm dastardly. You're, that's a very good point. And, uh, well said, uh, big fat nerd with a 10 pound super chat. Thank you. Big fat nerd says if thoughts have mass. Is this why you learn things and forget some to make room? If you could apply mass to a thought, you could theoretically download new information into your minds using tech. Yes, like in the Matrix. Remember, how do I fly this helicopter? Download the information. God, the Matrix is one of the greatest films ever made. It has so much resonance with... Uh, philosophical uh, ideas and, and uh, notions of, of the future. It's an astonishing film. It's a shame that the sequel sucked so bad. But man, The Matrix. Do you love The Matrix, Gary? Love the first one. God, I love the first one so much. It's one of the greatest films ever made. No doubt about it. Uh, thank I you. Think you could just watch the first one without watching the sequels at all. and It's perfectly fine the way it ends. I think it ends perfectly fine. It leaves it up to your imagination and uh, you do not need to watch the sequels at all. No, you don't. And, and I mean, it is, so, the, the sequels are so bad, Gary, mm -hmm. so fucking bad. I mean, Neo knew how to reach into the code. He was invulnerable and he could fly. So that basically invalidates all the rest of the other movies because he hardly does any of that. It's like, oh, well, we can't have a sequel if he can do that. So uh, we need to go ahead and just have him conveniently kind of sort of forget about it, like the Khaleesi, you know? This is a terrible. He could do anything. He was basically God in the Matrix, and they make him forget about that. He's like Superman. He's not going to waste time fighting eight, uh, hordes and hordes of Agent Smiths like he did at the finale of one of them. I forget which one. It's garbage. Just terrible garbage. It was not well done. Yep. Uh, thank you, big fat nerd. Uh, I I think that's true. I, I look information thoughts. Do they have mass? Well, how do they exist if they do not? Uh, you know what? You know what? What? What are they? And how do they translate? It's so weird. It's so weird. Consciousness, information, how how strange. Neo just forgot about the Iron Fleet, says Mary. Exactly. Exactly. Jesus. Matrix 4 will be the worst one to watch, says what oh, about. It'll be terrible. Oh, it's going to be bad. I'm not going to. I don't think I can go see it. I don't know. Uh, the Kelvington unleashed a Doomicorn in the chat, along with Big Daddy MRI, who unleashed a Doomicorn as well, and Cardinal Sin, not to be outdone, unleashed a Doomicorn. They were named Larry, Moe, and Curly. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are awesome. Caught yeah, I own uh, Witch in Residence. One of the Wachowskis, what? sorry, what? one of the Wachowskis lives here. No shit, uh, really? Yeah, I, I've seen, um, I forget which one, Lily, the one who, the, the one who transgendered first. Uh, yeah. So I don't know if she has a place here or anything, but I have seen her here many a time, many a time, just walking the streets and, uh, out in the Castro and stuff. And I used to drive, have to drive through the Castro like, uh, twice a week, uh, to pick up kids from school. Uh, God, it was every day for a while. So yeah, we'd stop and go to a, you know, a, Pete's and get a coffee and get get the kids some juice and yeah there, there's Lily Wachowski very very yep. cool interesting 
Did you ever say hi? No. 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 That's cool. Uh, uh, we have got to wrap up the exo zone here yeah. uh, shortly, folks. We we've got to eat and and uh, you know do biological functions. But let's let's see if we can get to the rest of these super chats here. Uh, Corion Witchin residents with a ten dollar Canadian super chat. Thank you, Corion Witchin residents. Says greetings, exo knots. Been reading about people using occult knowledge to summon UFOs. I studied the techniques and I think I could do it. I will not do it solo. Would love to have you guys there. Fuck no. <laughs> you would summon UFOs with occult knowledge? That implies that they're of, of the devil or something. I mean, how, how, what does it say about the reality of UFOs if you can stand in a pentagram and, you know, summon them or something? I don't know. What do you think, Gary? You don't want to fucking summon that kind of UFO, do you? Mm -hmm. Or do you? Mm -hmm. depends on the date no no i i no evil ufos i mean i don't want to get probed i mean i want to see them i want to have blink lights and have them go na, 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 yeah na, i want friendly like little that. you know claymation uh, <laughs> uh yeah. aliens coming down smiling and waving at me i want the happy little uh kind of kind of uh aliens from a laser blast you know that stop motion kind of shit, but I, I yeah, I, I don't want like <laughs> greetings. You have opened the portal to ultimate pain. It's like no, no, no. Uh, Koran rich in residence. I don't, I don't recommend it unless you know what the hell you're you're doing. Uh, you know, and what and what's going to come down. Uh, Jens Jurgensen with a fifty Danish kroner uh, silver chat. Thank you, Jens says. If 0.00001% of all solar systems in the Milky Way had a planet with life on it, there would be 20,000 planets with life on them. Yeah. I mean, well, that's the kind of math that is uh, fairly convincing to me. And uh, I, um, that's why I do not believe that aliens is a, is a silly topic. I, the only question is, how would they get here? But, you know, given that that they might be uh, thousands of years in advance of us, uh, you know, am I going to poo-poo alien technology? <laughs> I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Shit, we've seen some uh, evidence of it in our uh, in our atmosphere, for God's sakes. How stupid would I have to be? Uh, Bionic Belly Button with a $5 super chat. Hail, Bionic Belly Button, says a little off topic, but congratulations to Gary on 250,000 subs. Hail. Ah, uh, thank you. Hail. I appreciate it. A absolutely brother uh well deserved uh bless you my friend uh i'm very proud of you sir thank you man and thank absolutely. you bionic belly button absolutely uh taker 610 with a two dollar super chat hail taker 610 says stargate lore is 100 true gary and doomcock wow stargates yeah well, you hear stuff like that. I don't know how real it is, but it's possible. I, I guess it's possible. Well, isn't that that whole theory? We went into Iraq to go get a Stargate. That yes. Was the whole reason for uh, the first Iraq war. Could that be possible? Hmm. Uh, it's. It, I guess it could. I guess it could. Uh, but yeah, what are we doing with it? Well, maybe that's one of the source of the uh, screams in the sky. And uh, all all sorts of weirdness, man. All sorts of weirdness. We will we will get to some of that weirdness next time. Uh, the Loch Ness mobster with a two dollars super chat is saying, "Stop denying my existence." I'm huh? sorry, Loch Ness mobster. I am so so sorry, dude. Uh, my my sincere apologies. Uh, thank you, Loch Ness mobster. You're denying uh, my agency or whatever they use. Them. Yeah, dude. I I am so sorry. I stand corrected, friends. I just want to say the Loch Ness Mobster does exist. I was wrong. I admit it. Thank you, Loch Ness Mobster. Lost Hope with a $5 Australian super chat. Hail Lost Hope, says the pyramids on Mars line up well with the Southern Cross constellation. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, that they were constructed, that uh, they aligned with uh, astronomy uh, in the same way that our primitive cultures have aligned with astronomy in the past. Uh, I am not surprised whatsoever, Lost Hope. Are you, Gary? Nope. Nope. Not um, at all. I nope. Yeah, there's something to, uh, there's definitely something to Mars. Definitely. It is weird. 
Uh, and I, I would love to know someday. I would love to know someday. Uh, Zach Lossel with a $4.99 super chat. Thank you, Zach Lossel. Says, I've been watching Gary in the live channel for a month now via the great RMB. This stream is definitely needed. Hail Doomcock, Gary, and Harvey. Thank you, Zach. Uh, appreciate Zach. you being here, man. Right that on. is great. Uh, thank you for, for finding your way here, and I hope you will subscribe to my channel as well. Why, why are you always kind of horn in on my act, dude? Uh, you know, you're horning in on my act, but that's okay, Harvey. Oh, I think it, I, I beg to differ. I, 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 I'm sorry. I don't beg to differ. I just plain do. Thank you, Zach Lossel. Diego Flores with 32.90 uh, Peruvian souls. I'm not sure how to, how to say that. I'm, I'm sorry, Diego Flores. Uh, when you, I don't know what they, centavos. Uh, I don't know what the 0 0.90 term would be, but he says, Doomcock, I just experienced some real strangeness. I had not liked the video yet, but when I uh, went to like, it liked on its own without my input. I am going to start praying for a bit now. Wow. So basically, Diego Flores, you, uh, you with your mind, uh, liked a video. That is absolutely astonishing. Dude, that is weird. That is really weird. Uh, wow. Some kind of future travel, some kind of mental uh, projection uh, into the screen. Diego Flores, that is fantastic. Uh, wow. Thank you for, for sharing that. Well, it, this is the place for high, high weirdness, high strangeness. Uh, Diego Flores telepathically liked this stream. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Thank you, Diego. Demon Scythe Synthwave. That's a weird. Uh, Demon Scythe Synthwave. Hello. Oh, great artist of the fandom menace and inventor of the graphic for uh, Without Respect We Reject. You are awesome, Demon Scythe. And he says with a five pound super chat, you should have Final Death Star on. The UFO vids from his recent camping experience are legit. Also, UAMN YouTube channels, great. Seen Skinwalker docu series? Uh, no, I have not. U A M N. Uh, have you seen his uh, skin Skinwalker docu series? No, I have not. And Final Death Star. Interesting. I have seen some of those videos. Uh, may have to go ahead and do that. Uh, that is awesome. Thank you, Demon Side Synthwave, for those suggestions. Uh, we will look into them. Nicholas Horton with a five pound. Uh, a super chat. Thank you, Nicholas Horton. Good to see you, man. He says, Gary, topic for Friday Night Tides, clearer image of a new Dalek design recently leaked. If, yeah. Is it, it looks bad? like the it, yeah, it looks like um the one from uh the Jody uh, resolution episode, which uh basically it's a it's a female Dalek. It's oh, supposed to geez. it's 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 uh if you look at the the design of the Dalek in resolution and somebody compared it to an 1800s, like Victorian era dress. It looks like that. So it's smaller. It's daintier. It's kind of got a Robbie, the robot look to it. And it's uh, everything God. about, it's just like star Trek discovery. They don't, these people don't know Jack squat about fandom or, or, or Doctor Who, or Star Trek, or science fiction. So you bring in uh, these clowns to, to come and design stuff who, who, you know, because we need, you know, they, they probably brought somebody in who isn't even a Doctor Who fan. The, the Dalek design is perfect. <laughs> it's a perfect freaking salt and pepper shaker. It's And it needs to be big to be menacing. And this one is just, uh, it looks dainty and dumb. But it goes right along with Doctor Who, doesn't it? Uh, yes, it, it does. When a Dalek loves a female Dalek very, very much, they exterminate, exterminate. But she they, dresses in pink. They're going to put a female voice to a Dalek. Mark my words. Hello, Nicholas Dalek. Briggs. There'll be a Nicholas Briggs too, but they'll have, it, it'll be a superior Dalek and it'll, it'll have a female voice. Exterminate, I sweetie. I promise you that. Exterminate. Oh, my God. Maybe they'll get, uh, what's her name? Uh, Maeve from... Uh, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll probably get like... World. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, darling. Exterminate. exterminate, darling. Exterminate. This is how extermination is done, silly boy. It's, it's going to be fucking awful. 
Uh, and Karis with a $10 Australian super chat. Hail and Karis says, Hail conspicatorium. I just got in. What did I miss? Uh, all sorts of madness. Uh, we debunked a uh, UFO uh, crash in Brazil. It did not happen. We talked about a theory in physics now that um, that uh, information may have mass. Uh, we talked about uh, how an asteroid the size of a football field uh, nearly hit the Earth, came uh, closer than the moon to the Earth uh, a few days ago, and then uh, this, this uh, crazy nonsense. Uh, thank you, Encaris, for being here. Thank you all for being here, folks. I hope you all had fun on this Exo Zone. Uh, we will do it again uh, next time on Gary's channel. Gary, do you have anything you would like to plug, sir? No, oh, just uh, subscribe to Nerdrotic if you'd like. Uh, and I'd just like to thank everyone who has subscribed to Doomcock and yours truly and our alternate channels. We are grateful for you all. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, subscribe to my other channel. Uh, Overlord DVD is the channel. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you for uh, <laughs> Skywarp727 says, Inseminate! Inseminate! Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hail Phil Arconis. I would get a, a joke about information in the prisoner, of course. Uh, anyway, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. We will do this again soon. Uh, from the center of the earth, this is Dictor Van Doomcock with Gary Beekler of the Nerd Erotic Channel, bidding you all, my friends, stay angry, stay curious, keep an open mind, and have fun. See you next time, folks. Good night.